Lord, go ahead and express yourself. Say, Lord, I need you. I need you, the psalmist said, as the deer pants after the water brooks. He says, so my soul longs after you. Inside and outside, lift your voice and declare how much you need him. He only feels those who are thirsty. The Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lord, we need you. Thank you, Jesus. More of you. More of you, oh Lord. We will never have enough. More of you. This is why we came tonight. Express yourself sincerely to the Lord. Tell him why you came tonight. And in case you don't know why you came, think about it again. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. Lord, we want more of your glory, more of your power, more of your presence. We want to know you. Hallelujah. 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 Never forget why you are in the Lord's presence. Every time you show up in his presence, make sure that you don't get carried away by the things that are happening, that you forget that he's in this place. Hallelujah. Now pray and say, Lord, do something in my life tonight. Do something. Lord, change someone's life, heal someone's life, deliver someone. Yes, Lord. Do this for your glory. Make sure you're praying from the depths of your heart. This is part of the meeting. We cannot do anything outside of your presence. Hallelujah. You know, the presence of God remains the secret of anything. I don't care what it is. The presence of God. If you lack, listen, listen carefully. If you lack possible to have the power of God and his presence can fade out of your life. Are you listening to me? It's always possible. You can chase power. You can pray for power and you can get it without the presence of God. But the presence of God is a direct product. It's a state of the health of your fellowship with the Holy Ghost. 
this is the litmus test of whether or not you are in fellowship with the Holy Ghost it's not necessarily power a man can stay and not pray for one year he may be absent in God's presence for one year and still lay hands on someone and they will fall but there is a presence that one you can't fake it it is it's an aura it 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 gives people a picture of your current state with heaven you can raise wheelchairs even if you never go to the secret place for years these are gifts but that atmosphere that glory when you stand and speak to people the word of god comes into they cannot even explain what what is happening to them that one is the presence of god that's not power that's not power you can fake power you cannot fake his presence see when you see a man who lives in the presence of god when he stands before you you may not understand intellectually what is happening but you 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 know that this is there is there is an intercourse a current present reality many lives do not have the presence of god they have power they have motions they have people falling down have you been in a meeting that you don't even know god is there but you just see crutches standing up that's power but the presence of god the glory of god no mortal being can stand in the glory of god and be the same no matter how stubborn and hardened you are something will an impression will be left upon your spirit hallelujah see when the presence of god dries from a life you will know you just sense that everything around you can still have motions of power but there is a freshness that freshness is absent in many lives so you can hear a preacher nice message but the impact is not about shouting or not shouting the bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither that's a characteristic of the presence of god father we pray that we will never lose your presence take away from us anything whatever it is that is capable of causing us to lose your presence So I bow as I enter the throne room and I cast myself down at your feet, Lord, for you are holy, thou art holy. There is none like you, for in your presence, that is where I must be. For in your presence, that is where I must be. For in your presence, that is where I must be. That is the place of my strength. In your presence, that is where I must be. Lord, in your presence. That's the place of wisdom in your presence. That is the place of power in your presence. That is the place of revelation in your presence. That is the place of authority 
in your presence that is the place of glory in your presence that's where I am strong in your presence oh Lord my God in your presence that's where I belong I am seeking your faith touching your grace in the clefts of the rock in your presence Holy Spirit thank you for your presence truly can do nothing without you. You have become my Lord, my friend. There is no ministry without your presence. You are the secret. Always. You are the secret of freshness. You are the secret. does not know how to practice the presence of God. We know how to pray. We know how to fast. We know how to stretch in tongues for hours and days. But we do not know how to cultivate the art of his presence. Holy Spirit, thou art well Thou art welcome in this place. Only potent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you're truly welcome in my life. I'm worshiping him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome You are the fire in me You are the power at work in me You are my presence Helper, Holy Spirit, I adore. You 
are that fire in me. Fire. You are the power at work in me. You are my ever present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. Nakane, 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 Nakane. Girma, no kaka. Hey, Abo, na kane, na kane, na kane, na kane, na kane, na kane. Hallelujah. for your presence I have learned the value of your presence I won't trade anything for your presence I have learned the value of your presence my King I love your presence minute and say, Lord, cast me not away from your presence. Pray and say, Lord, may I not. Many of us have lost the experience of his presence. You're just operating power. I'm telling you. This is part of the meeting. You can really get distracted and forget his presence. Your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. How can I? How can I lose your presence? What for? Make sure you are praying. This is part of the meeting. Hallelujah.
church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've lost the art of God's presence. That you are praying, prayer is not the same as the presence of God. Many people think that you are praying in tongues. Have you not seen people who pray week after week every day? But there are certain people when they step in, it's an atmosphere. In the glory, I will stand. Help me with the symbol. I will stand and I will lift my hand. In your glory, I will receive. Every miracle you have for me in your glory I will stand I will stand and I will lift my hand In your glory, I will receive every miracle you have for me. I love your presence. I truly love your presence. More than gold, more than silver. Oh, I love your presence. I love your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. Better than power, better than anointing, I'm telling you. Better than fame. Nothing can be compared to the presence of the Lord Jesus. See, without the presence of God, you don't have a message, you don't have a ministry, you don't have an assignment. Learn this. Everything you will ever be and do will only have value because there is a presence that backs you. Stop chasing after what his presence can give you. I have learned by experience Moses said, Lord, do not send us from here. Yes, let the people say we are marking time. But don't send us if your presence will not go with us. He understood the value. Many of us have not been trained. The, the presence of God is not goosebumps. The presence of God is not some ecstatic feeling. the Lord walking with them not answering their prayers walking with them and the Lord making his habitation Father teach us your presence and help us to value your presence in the name of Jesus please be seated
means a man can be casted from his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. It's good to have everyone around. We bless God for last week. Hallelujah. Celebrate God's servant, Pastor Williams. It is a powerful word. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. It was a great time last week the house. I know some of you didn't miss me. You were very happy. I have good news for you. I'm back. Praise God. I'm back alive, strong. God kept me for your sake. Shout it more than ever until you change.
Hallelujah. We give God a fraction, just a fraction of our attention, our lives. And then we sit back and wonder, Lord, why is my life not like so, 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 person? So. And God is saying, this person has given me all. Hallelujah. For as long as there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. So make sure you write, pay attention to the things that are taught. It will build you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1, 22. Did you hug one another? While seated, just turn to your neighbor and hug the person left or right. We didn't do that. We believe in love. Do it. Don't look at me. Some of you are frowning as if it's a curse. Hug one another. At least this is what we do now in, in lieu of holy kiss. like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and immediately forgetteth what manner of man he was can you imagine but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth in it take note he looks into the perfect law of liberty and he continues in it he said he be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word. What's the reward? This kind of man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. Now, there are lots of believers who, as they begin to walk with God, they start saying, Lord, why am I not receiving results in my life? Why is brother so-so-so or sister so-so-so receiving results? And I've been born again for a long time. I come to church, I pray, and I fast. Hallelujah. But then I'm not seeing the manifestation of God's word in my life. I'm not seeing evidences that show that I am truly walking with the word and that the word is working in my life. Hallelujah. And several times people send me text messages and say, I love God. I have done everything I know how to do. I mean, this thing is either the word is not working. I can't explain it. I've done everything I know how to do. I've prayed, I've fasted, you know, I read scripture, I even bought books. And I'm even doubting now whether this thing works or not. Hallelujah. Tonight I trust that God will help us examine that truth and then we'll pray. The Bible says, James 1, verse 22. Anyone with Amplified? James 1, 22. Please, when you find that person, let her go. 
By reasoning contrary to the truth. By reasoning contrary to the truth. It says obeying the message. See, a lot of people wonder why they don't see results in their lives. And they love God. They come to church. They are sincere people. Hallelujah. But over a long period of time, nothing, nothing at all seems to work in their life. They have scriptures in their mind. They can quote scriptures. And then they wonder why these things are not working. And the Bible begins to give us an insight into what may be the possible cause. It says what? Be ye doers. Say after me, doers. Practitioners of the word. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves that means in a crowd like this there are people who can be hearers oh glory I'm hearing this word I believe it I take it I receive it hallelujah the Bible calls them hearers but then it is possible that as the word of God is coming you are hearing but there is no willingness in you to practice the principles and live by the word. It says, do not be hearers only, deceiving yourselves. In other words, the Bible calls it self-deceit. Hallelujah. You are listening to the word just like everyone. You can quote the scripture just like everyone. You know the songs. You know all the religious cliches. But the Bible says that they are not practitioners of they don't live by it. They are not committed to walking in the truth at all cost of the word. And the Bible calls that, if you are a victim of that, the Bible says you have been deceiving yourself. So it is possible for a man to deceive himself. And there are many Christians, many pastors, many members, many great men and women of God who are living in deceit, deceiving themselves. They love God, but they are not practitioners of God's word. Can I tell you something? The performance of the word is for doers. Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says. Without an action, without a doing, there is no faith. I'm telling you, many believers, born again, tongue-talking believers, are not practitioners of kingdom principles they know it and, and you see look up please look up the most dangerous thing that can happen to any man is for you to know certain truths and not practice it because anytime you hear someone teaching it there is that hardness you already know hallelujah you already know but it's not working in your life it's not producing results that means something is wrong he said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it leaves you with a promise. He says, so that thy profiting will appear unto you. So could it be that we have many believers who hear the word, MP3s all the time in their ears, and not many are committed to the practice of God's word. truly do not believe the word if you don't practice any 
part of scripture you have not been practicing is the part you don't believe no matter how you try to convince yourself according to God's principles you have believed a thing truly if you are living by it so you see that we have many Christians but few believers not many people truly believe the word hallelujah look up for those that are students when ABU brought out your timetable did you believe that timetable how did you prove that you believed it when your lecture was eight o'clock were you sleeping you got up and went to class believing you didn't see the person who pasted the timetable correct but you were so convinced if you just lay down there and say oh, my timetable is out when they brought out your exam timetable, how did you prove you believed it people jump at the library that's faith in the administration so many people now say i love the lord lord i love you the urgency in your spirit during exams tells you how much you trust that those people will not change that timetable and that you had better be serious are you listening to me but when it comes to practicing god's word there is no urgency there is complacency and people just hope that maybe it will work it tells on the way we respond and live by the word of God. So we have people tithing today, not tithing tomorrow. We have people loving today, not loving tomorrow. We have people studying the word and not studying. And then you ask people why. And they tell you, look, if you really know what is happening in my life now, you will even thank God that I'm still born again. And you expect people to sympathize with you. They say, look, see, just forget to, it's just God that is helping me right now. <laughs> Can I tell you something, friends? Listen, if you bend from living by God's principles, it will not be an excuse for God to just see your tears and bring blessings into your life. You will suffer ruthlessly for it. If everyone else is practicing what is not of God, and you say, talk, will I stand alone? You will suffer. Are you listening to me? If you claim God's word is not working and you leave it, then what else are you practicing? Hallelujah. Many believers truly do not live by the word of God. The Bible says, be ye doers. This looks very simple very very simple but this is the reason why so many people will never walk in certain realms of the reality of the kingdom by him because we truly do not live by the word deceiving yourselves hallelujah many believers many hearers we have all kinds of tapes different bookstores Jordan is here. His bookstore is full of tapes and books. There are many of us who buy books and buy tapes every week. When they go to your room, they see series of different men of God. Different series. Hallelujah. Say, have you read this book? You say, yes, Abba, chapter 1 talks about this, chapter 1. And then you see the person is chorusing the solution for his predicament, yet not changed by it. Hallelujah. Have you seen such kind of people? They can tell you when they are counseling somebody, you, you hear them speak. Ask them, you can attach someone who just got born again to them and they will train the person and you become a wonder in the spirit. But they themselves will never rise beyond that level. But they understand the spiritual principles. You can send them on evangelism, they will bring back souls. They can do great motions but to live and get personal success in their lives as a result of the word of God they will never do it that's why Paul said let it not be that after I have preached I myself will be a castaway that means it is possible there are many men of God who are victims of the things they teach they stand on stage and attack immorality as if they don't know who a lady is. But you search their lives and see. Every hotel already knows them. Do I? 
servants of the Lord. There are many preachers who teach on tithing and giving. They themselves don't give. The reason why they are still rich is because people are sowing into their lives. So they don't know the difference. They don't live by the word of God. Many people say, okay, speak the word and pray. But the leaders themselves don't pray. Hallelujah. You go to a man of God's house, you see him cross his leg and he's watching football match. He gives you the timetable. See, have you not known that the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs? You see why certain people do not have personal success in their lives? Because the truth is, they have not come to a point where they love God genuinely. And are willing to live by his principles. There are men of God who declare fasting and prayer. And while the people are fasting, they are eating stockfish. Nobody knows. You just see them come. You see, we can fake every kind of thing on stage. But can I tell you something? Just as light and darkness cannot be mistaken, one day it will show whether you are standing in God's word or not. Hallelujah. Every time I pick up my Bible, I tell the Lord, am I studying simply because of the responsibility of ministry? Is it because I must prepare a message for God's people? Or is it because people will come for counseling? Hallelujah. Then you see people come and they stand to cast out devils and embarrass themselves. Yeah, that's where the robber will hit you. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ and they go back with untold predicaments as a result of daring hell with a hypocritical spirit. It's easy to stand before people. I take authority over this devil. And then the man cannot sleep in the night in his house. He will call somebody and say, can you just come and stroll around? Because even him, he's not convinced that the name of Jesus works. It just so happened that he was used and the demon left never forget in secondary school when we prayed for one interesting boy that used to sleep on top of my walk and the devils came out oh, you, 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 come, you need to come and see us when evening came Bible said, and when evening came that was when Jesus was healing but when evening came for us that was when it became a serious concern people started singing praise and worship strolling out of their rooms moving to the and they took light I didn't sleep there You watch people teach about certain kingdom principles and when you see them, you say, my God, look at the, the unwavering audacity. But then they don't believe it. Someone teaches on tithing and says, I assure you, if you don't tithe, you will do this. This person ask him in all sincerity. You see, we are not in the Old Testament. Otherwise, many men of God would have been humbled by now. Many of us. I'm not just saying them. You know now, God's grace is everybody can do everything. Whether you are tithing or not, who will know? It's just you and God. But can I tell you something? A day will come, the fruit of the tree will show. Are you listening to me? Many believers, many of us don't pray. You don't pray. The only time you really have to pray is when you come for koinonia. So when you are praying, you just feel that spirit you felt last week. Ba, 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 ba. And you are feeling guilty as you are praying. You know that you have neglected your secret place. Some of us rub our Bibles on our bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. I declare safe journey to coin on you. And then you are leaving. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It only happen if they say, all right, in uh, maybe... The protocol or worship or any department, you are the one who will lead prayers. Then you fast and pray and believe that all heavens happen. Only just to perform that religious ritual and then you leave. But can I tell you something? You can deceive man, but in the realm of the spirit, there is no deceit. A lot of people say you cannot deceive God. You cannot even deceive demons. You see, because in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. I hope you know that. You can deceive men in this realm. But I tell you the truth, in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare.
as the sons of Sceva. Paul was doing certain things and one day the Bible says they gathered Kamsa. They carried somebody, sons of Sceva, plenty of them. And they came and they quietly locked the door. They said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Is that not the real Jesus? And the demon says, today is today. You will know that we have been watching you. He said, Jesus, I know. In other words, I see them in the secret. We know that they are living by the principles of God's word. And so we can attest. See, if you don't, if you don't run away from God in the secret, he will not disappoint you in the open. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He said, but who are you? He said, since you want to pretend, it's time for the whole community to know that this anointing is fake. And the Bible says, that spirit beat all of them, one, stripped off their clothes, two, and drove them out for the whole city to see. So imagine the men of God in that city, naked. What happened? Not accident, not bomb blast, no nothing. Say a victim of a... Uh, <laughs> You just imagine miracle service. And then just imagine all of us running. Me and Bishop stand. I say, let's stand in unity. What happened? Oh, but that's what happened. That's what the Bible says happened. Do you, do you think those guys will be the same? They will first run away from that environment. And go and say, what minute these things? I thought it was so easy. When you see a man who is living by the word doing some things, you think it's so easy and cheap. And then you come with the absence of God's presence and you try to do the same thing and you receive a rude shock in your life. Be doers. Be doers. Are you a doer of the word? Are you truly practicing the principles that you know? Or do you just say, oh, I know, I know, at least I, I know, God knows. Are you a practitioner of the word? Hallelujah. There are many men of God who teach about giving. They are as stingy as anything. They don't give anybody anything. Anything. If ever they give, is from what they gave them. You don't need faith to do that one. It came as a gift. And then you give it. Hallelujah. This is very important. Are you a practitioner of God's word? We teach on character. We teach on the anointing. We teach on certain principles. There have been so many messages that have come from this camp. I told you that some years ago, God asked me to do something. That's a customized dealing between me and the Holy Spirit. For one week, I was reading, chewing, devouring any book and any tape I find. Whether it's relevant to me or not, I just wanted to grow. Studying the Bible, reading chapters upon chapters, books upon books in a day. And then one time the Lord told me for the next one week, I shouldn't open my Bible. I went back to those notebooks that I had been jotting and the Lord told me if I were practicing up to 10% of the things that were there, my life would have changed and I was ashamed of myself because I know God cannot lie. Many of you are holding the solutions to your life and destiny in these books that you keep bringing week after week. You do not respect what you wrote with your own hands. You cried on the day you were writing it. Somebody even gave you a handkerchief and you clean and you quickly wrote it. But you are not living by it. You cried that day as if you will live. They say make commitments and before they said anything, you were the first to go down on your knees. But after that, you see that's why honestly, honestly, I'm not carried away when people just kneel down or lie down or roll. I'm not saying don't do that. But there's too much emotion in the church too much emotion and we men of God are consoled whenever there are emotions because we feel ah the people are really getting it the power of God is flowing not necessarily so if I sing a very nice song now whether the name of Jesus is there or not some of you will start crying you are just emotional 
it will just remind you of maybe one your children's choir song something and you just start crying it doesn't mean you are being changed it's just simple memory of the past Very few believers. See, every time I pray to God, I lie down and I say, Lord, help me. I cannot boast that I'm practicing every single part of the word, but help me. This must be your attitude. It's not just the truth you know. It's not just what you've had. What are you doing about it? There are many of you that give koinonia messages to your friends and your family members. Powerful messages that can get them out of their predicament. They collected it, put it in their laptops. They've not listened to it. Some of you have all the koinonia messages, including last week's one. How many have you listened to? There are people who are always collecting messages, collecting everything. Do you have this Abba, Jerry Sabel? I have. To. You see sections, and there's nothing that is being changed in their lives. Nothing, not their character not any result the reason hear me very simple but profound is that many of us are listeners but we are not practitioners hallelujah i remember somewhere in just they were doing orientation for jerusalem pilgrims those who are going to go to jerusalem and you know they have some time of just encouragement and for some bible studies after teaching them about the significance of visiting the holy land and the impact it should create they were giving them warnings and they said no drinking and one old man was just looking at them while they were talking he didn't say anything he was just looking at them and later when it was time for people to comment just say anything aob the guy said well this is my own issue i won't go and buy beer in the holy land but if i see it i won't let it spoil you see that Now, do you think that person will ever walk in the fullness of what God has said? No. That's how some of us are. I won't buy cigarette, oh, for instance. But if someone offers me, even God knows. I won't go and look for any lady. But whoever makes a mistake of coming to my house, even God knows that it's not with my leg I use them with. See, and it's amazing how people make these confessions and they, they are happy. People smile and then they feel very fulfilled. Let me tell you something. If you are not a practitioner of the word, you will be frustrated twice. Let me tell you the first frustration. The first frustration is because you have endured too much. Secondly, only to find out that your endurance is in vain because you were deceiving yourself. You see that? So someone who was not practicing the principles of God, who had been looking at you and been prophesying your doom, in the future it will truly happen because you have been deceiving yourself. Bible says, be ye. He says, do not just be hearers, but doers. Be doers, not just hearers, deceiving yourself. How many of us here have been deceiving ourselves? Tonight, God is really examining us. How many of us? There are, many, there are very few of us that truly put the teachings we receive to work. That's why there are very few people that have results. But God wants everyone to walk in the manifestation of the word of God in your life. That with time, something should begin to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For instance, there may be some of us that still have all kinds of godless and useless musics, videos, and different things in our phones. You are born again. Hallelujah. And all those pornographic jargons are still on your phone thanks to Blackberry you can ping your destiny left and right from one person to the other receive things you should not receive and then Facebook again these things are nice if you use them well Twitter we have all kinds of media um, outlets that help people not to live by the principles of the world so you have a man of God who loves God. He's preaching the gospel. But still has in one secret place in his folder. Passworded. All kinds of pornographic jargons. 
and the problem is they will never admit they need help you see the point it's a different thing if you are struggling with a challenge and you admit and say lord somebody help me but where people just laugh then they come out and do all kinds of things and then you sit down and they wonder why God is not bringing members to their church. God is not bringing increase. They wonder why. And then they begin to criticize others that have this result. They say, forget about them, Jerry. They must be putting their hands somewhere. Let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standed sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Men may not know, but God knows those who are his. I listened to a message by Johnson Suleiman, a minister's conference that broke me in a very serious way. We're playing it for our, our Bible students. Very powerful. And this guy began to speak about, not, I'm not saying this to criticize. Many men of God, bishops, popular people you know in this country who deal on drugs. That's how they make their money. Millionaire clubs of pastors, apostles, prophets, bishops. Hallelujah. Currently, it was told that in NDLEA, drug law, there are about 230 something pastors that are under police custody for drugs. Some of them are your pastors. Who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. John Suleiman said he went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, they asked him, they said, Kai, it's very cold. Oh. Do you need a warmer? The guy said, no, the AC is okay. We can adjust. He said, no, we are not we need a warmer. He said, what do you mean a warmer? He said, a lady now. After the burden of standing to minister, the Bible says, and when Abraham's wife died, they brought a lady called Keturah. So to have somebody who will come and comfort you, and he looked at the man and said, what is all this? He said, the pastors in Nigeria do it. He showed some permanent ladies that belong to many of the men of God you see and celebrate. They caught a bishop at customs office with his bishop this thing. You know their shoes are customized. They opened the shoe and saw kilograms of cocaine and in the bishop's staff, kilograms of cocaine. Are you listening to me? And a pastor who was called 100 Bibles, 100 Bibles in each of them, they were wraps of cocaine. Nigerians, people who stand and lift up their hands and wonder why God honors some people and turns away from some people. Tonight is a message to re examine ourselves. Are you interested in practicing God's word? Joseph Suleiman said he was on his way going with his books and they stopped him. He said they stopped him. And they said, please, we know you are a great man, but we we'll probe you. When they finished, the customs officer called him and said, are you embarrassed? I'm sorry. But right now, the situation with Nigerian pastors requires that we check a lot of things. You find out how many preachers have married abroad and have wives and children that nobody knows. Never the woman says, I will shout or just get more money from building project or whatever and just try and say, You said, keep quiet. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standard show. Are you a practitioner of God's word? Hallelujah. He said he was in a hotel and a lady came, just knocked and said, You have a parcel from the receptionist. As soon as he opened the door, that was how she just stripped herself. He said he was almost tempted to sleep with her. This is a sincere man of God. Because we live in a world full of men of God who exalt themselves and try to pretend all kinds of garbages while they are dying in the secret. The Bible says, he who conceals his sin shall not be delivered. He shall not prosper. Hallelujah. He said he didn't know when he turned and started shouting in tongues. That was the only help he could get. Shatter 
the lady just closed the door. Who know? Who know? He would have slept with her quietly. And his protocol will receive him in Nigeria. The great man. Whereas you have no identity in the realm of the spirit. Don't be surprised when they tell you there are pastors going to hell. gave him a brand new Bible students don't worry you watch the video it's a minister's conference won't give people around but you watch it hallelujah gave him a brand new car to Jeep most men of God are you not surprised that with the evil happening most of the people who should talk are not saying anything they are just keeping quiet come on now Jesus said the one who dipped his hand with me in this pot is the one who is not innocent when you have dipped your hand with somebody and will you bite the finger that is feeding you? Hallelujah. It's sad, but I must tell you this. It's sad. I did a little study and I'm glad he said it about the concept. Please, I'm not criticizing any pastor or anything. Please, don't send me any text messages telling me jargons. But the guy who ordained the bishops, his name is El Pok. And he was the one who ordained Idahosa, ordained, and you know, many of the men of God we know today. Are you listening to me? And that guy was living in a lot of, as at the time, he was living in a lot of sexual perversion. This is the reason why most of the bishops and the great men of God they find themselves lost and materialism are two things they cannot explain. See, that's why the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man so that you will not be partakers of their sins. You just hear one great bishop just got up. Ah, he's gay. Now you try. You, and you are now thinking. I always pray to God and say, Lord, as I stand to minister to your people, let me not transfer a faulty spirit. Once you see a whole congregation of people manifesting certain widespread characteristics, the leaders are not to be spared. I, I tell you the truth. The leaders are not to be spared. Hallelujah. I told you about my encounter in worry. When a lady came to knock my door by 1 p.m. Hallelujah. What she wore, it was too short. Where's my waist? This is it. See, this watch, this watch she wore. And then it had a it had a zip. Yes, she lifted it. I mean, she was proud. When I opened the door, ah! She said, "Sorry, I'm looking for the 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 uh, receptionist in this place." I didn't know what to say. I said, "Are you not seeing my room number?" I'm a guest here in the night, quietly. Who know? that door and I locked it. Kapa, kapros, katalabada. I will leave Zari and come to worry, kill my destiny and come back. See, when these things happen, that is when you will know whether you love God or not. That's why the Bible says for you to prepare. He said if your strength fails you in the day of battle, your strength is small. If you turn aside in the day of battle, there are too many people who are pretending like they are living the reality of God's word. Back to that story about that his son. And he saw the increase. After he gave him the car keys, he said, hold on. Apostle John Suleiman and his wife called him and he said, please talk to us. I'm seeing increase in my own ministry, but not like this. This does not carry the signature of God. What are you doing? The guy said, well, you know, the blessings of God and some of the principles the principles that uh, daddy like you have taught us. He said, no. He told him, go out. He called his wife. He said, madam, you know that I see. Talk to me. And she began to tell him, there 
is a popular herbalist in this country. I won't mention names of things. He said he took the woman there and they told him that they should bring a six-year-old child together with a customized mic just like my own here that nobody else will hold. Listen to me. And when that sacrifice was made, they said anywhere around Lagos, if your ears can hear that mic, whether your leg likes it or not, it will enter that church and sit down there. So ministry is expanding. And many sons just come, Papa, receiving demons and spirits. And now he got a seed of a jeep and he gave him. Joseph Suleiman said, he said, even those who backslided did not go to the devil. They just fell short of God's grace. Is it that bad that you went? He said, from today, I delete your number from my phone. I have nothing to do with you again. Do you know how many men of God go for meetings and they go with ridiculous PAs that nobody can explain? Let me see one pretty lady. Annie, come. So I'm going, I'm going to where now, Mina? And I just drop. I tell them, please, book two rooms or one large room. Anyone can serve me. Two or one large room. And then I say, she's my PA. Hallelujah. And when you see the seriousness in my life, you will even believe. Think I'm seeing every lady like trees. This is an example, oh. Media. It's an example. Hallelujah. And then what happens? In the name of PA and useless, stupid, satanic manifestations of lack of self-control. What happens? So they have different people in different spots. Just sleep with that sharp sharp and then they just clap for the man. Comes to sit down and he stands up. And you see people falling under the anointing. He's genuinely anointed, but he has lost the presence. See, Samson woke up from sleeping with a prostitute. Did you read that in your Bible? What did he do? Immediately, the Bible didn't say he prayed to God. Immediately, he got up, removed the gate of a city. Because they said they wanted to enter and kill him. So he said, let me remove the gate for you. you are compromising on kingdom things and God is merciful it's not an endorsement are you listening to me this is what a lot of people don't know may God deliver us from a life of falsehood and bring us into a point where we truly practice the word of God there are many men of God who stand on stage and say I don't owe God one night and God says you owe me three years three years you're a liar you are shouting I don't owe God anyone it's not true it's not true they don't believe in giving they don't give they just have the way of getting money they can cook up any ridiculous project that nobody can account for and you know the way men of God run ministry especially I'm telling you especially those who are not transparent they run it in such a way that nobody can question them these are prophetic instructions these are this and that so you sister please after Koenonia, let me see you in my room it's a prophetic instruction what nonsense is that who is deceiving you then when she comes see you say don't you smile how about is that not what some of your lecturers do they look very serious. Come to my office. When you come, you say, ah, ah, relax. Who is beating you? Those are indications of perversion. Pack your load and run away. No matter what it will cost. Doers of the word. Doers. Whether anybody is watching you or not, you are packaging your tithe and saying, Lord, you know I honor you and I believe this. Whether you are alone or you are true, you see a challenge in your life that is questionable. You don't sit there and just say, wow, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. You seek for help. Quick. I've had the opportunity to pray for a lot of ministers and I do that with all humility. When I see certain people come and say, look, I'm a man of God, but I'm struggling with this. I tell him, I say, look, we are all products of God's grace. 
but for your openness and sincerity the Lord will bless you but there are all kinds of people who will sit down and believe they are the Alpha and the Omega everything about God is in them are you listening to me please so what aspect of the word have you not made up your mind to live by and practice I will not be surprised if there are still ladies in this place that get up to go and spend weekend in one guy's house you are here you are looking at me say to won't I go is the only one now the Christian brothers are not coming which nonsense are you saying who do you want now to come and meet this kind of unfertile soil who do you want to come with this kind of life the brother who is praying and sweating in your presence and praying for his destiny look at what you are living be surprised if there are some of you who still tell your parents lies and inflate figures of school fees and the rest now you laugh because we have a church that massages things you should address you just say forget that lie. don't make the people feel guilty what nonsense is that you don't find that in koinonia by the grace of god we will attack whatever needs to be attacked in love until we present a bride that is worthy of god's power and glory and grace Once situation becomes a bit uncomfortable, just a bit, you can shake like a leaf and compromise at anything that comes. You are not a doer of the word. Tonight, the Lord is asking you, are you ready to come back to a point where you truly begin to practice the word? Whether you are supervised or not. I always tell people, the true proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If come to sin, if Tosin is my daughter and she's staying under my roof, you know the kind of person I am. You know there are some things I won't tolerate. I cannot say Tosin is a nice lady because I'm there. I listen to me. The day I leave her alone and she has the opportunity to do anything she wants to do but she says i have come to take the word of my father as my own word i'm not doing it because of him at that point they are the practitioners of god's word god bless you there are some of you the only thing that is keeping you right now is because we are watching you hallelujah one day someone came and said pray for me i want to go abroad i said why he said truly i just know that god wants me to be there I wanted to pray for the person and the Lord told me don't waste your time. This is not my desire. This person is just going to one time abroad. Some of you want to go abroad. First day you go abroad and stand and you see ladies almost moving and you find out that nobody is even concerned. Ah, you just say, are you, are you serious? And I'm so happy my father's phone has fallen. When you are not supervised, are you going to stand for truth? Do you know that there are some people that get back into things like drinking simply because maybe there are a group of friends are there. They say, don't fall our hands, I beg. And the guy will sit down and say, ah, just turn around and saw pretty lady. He said, oh, God, let me just do it. This is one last time. I'll ask for forgiveness later on. Are you ready to stand and live by the word? Can you be different? When people are bribing and doing other things, say, just give me my own. I won't be against you, but I won't talk. Because the way I'm seeing some of us, God is keeping you right now. It's just God that is tying your leg. You are like foxes. If they set fire and leave you, you can't do anything. That's why God has refused to expose some people into certain levels of blessings. You think he's a devil. It's because you are not ready. many of us the day you hold one million of your own not that your father gave you that you should keep it for him your your own that nobody knows only you ha. you can book the best room in tj palace you can charter a car from here and anywhere you can take a flight just drop in lagos and go back 
you can do anything you want to do. At that point, you find out three days, four days, you've not prayed. He said, God, no problem, we'll talk. Because there's no pressure again. It's time to begin to ask yourself, are you pretending over your passion for God or do you genuinely mean it? Are you just coming for koinonia because you feel kind? Let me come. Don't want anybody asking me any question. Did you come or not? Let me just come. Back home. I love the Lord on stage, anywhere. I love him with all my heart. And I'm committed to living by the truths of God's word that I know nothing else. I don't care what level of honor comes. And I want that to be your resolve tonight. Let me show you another scripture. John 13. Verse 17. John 13, verse 17. Let's read it together if you're there. One to read. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So it's not enough to know. Jesus is encouraging them. Say, if you know these things, you will be happy when you do them. If you know the principles that can bring a blessed life, happy are you. Yeah, some of you, you have your remaining exams now. You trusted God last year. It came out the way you don't like. He said, God, now I'm wiser. I won't get punished like a child again. Now I'm a man. I pray for a generation of men and women who are uncompromising. There are many of you, nobody can vouch for you. Hallelujah. There are some of you here, nobody can vouch for you. You can't beat your chest and say, Kai, I know this. The Bible says, God said, I know Abraham that he will teach his children the way he would. He will raise his children in the way of the Lord. Let me ask you a question, all of you here. Who can speak for you if you are not there and say, I truly know that this person is a Christian? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you that nobody can speak for you. When they just ask and say, this guy, say, ah, in this life, you don't talk for people. Once you see people talking like that, they, they are already answering the question. Hallelujah. They say, sorry, want to appoint this person one post and what do you do? Ah, no, just leave that position vacant there, please. Don't give God a headache. We have enough challenges in this church. See? Many of us are not dependable. You don't, your, 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 re, your resolve on God's word cannot be verified. You love God, but we are not yet sure if a guy starts meandering around you, whether you stand. It's amazing what people do in the presence of certain opportunities. Hallelujah. I know a lady one time, some years ago, she wanted her school fees desperately. Then we used to meet at um, chapel. And the girl started attending year night meetings actively. Apparently, she had that it's time for payment of school fees. Every time this lady would greet me, immediately after the program, I said, Lord, thank you. You are doing great things in life in this place. As soon as this girl got this school fees, I didn't see her again. Till I'm serious. About a, a year later, when it was about the same time, she just sent a text. She said, it's been a while. I miss you. I miss you. I said, me. Abba. Judas kissed Jesus, took him to hell. Nobody will kiss me and take me to hell. 
That's how many of us are with God. You just thank God. Hallelujah. I'm sharing this testimony. God is doing great things in my family. And at that point, especially our parents, you see that there is a sense of your father who has not done devotion in 12 years. Say, Everybody wake up. Wake up family. We are going to give God glory this morning. You just know that one areas that has been pending has suddenly come. Later on you wake him and he says the day you enter this room again. And you are now asking, so who is deceiving who? That's how many of us are. When you came in the session, you were very excited. Hallelujah. Very excited. You had one pointing fingers at people and saying, these guys are not praying. What's wrong? Pray for them. Now you are the one they are praying for. Why? Every time they see you strolling around Paladin, they say, one guy told me on Facebook he loves me. See, the things people do, that's why it's good. Hear me, brothers and sisters. That's why it's good to let God examine your heart. Don't set an exams for yourself and mark yourself. Give yourself a organized speech and price for yourself and say, I'm growing. Hold on. Let God be the one to work on you. But there must be a result. There are many of us today, the way we are pursuing God, if we don't get what we want from God, it's, it's possible you will just wave and say, God, I walked with you for five years. Everybody has seen now that I've tried. Bless my father, you didn't bless him. Bless my mother, you didn't bless him. Bless everybody. Leave me alone. Just bless them. You didn't even bless them. Why will I stay? He said, I will backslide. Look at who is going to suffer. The throne is made of gold. Everything is made of gold. You are the one suffering here. And people who live these kinds of lives get angry at those who are paying the price to live by the word of God. Because the moment you see that there is a sister who is standing and saying, by the grace of God, I'm going to stand. I will wait for the will of God. I'm developing myself in virtue and character. Say, just say all of us are bad now. Who, did they talk to you? Our presence is judging what you are doing. Please don't uh, pray. Let's just know that us were sinners. What is all that? Or you just see a guy reading plenty books. He's read seven books in a week. You have been sleeping and snoring. You just wake up. Your saliva is almost, it has poured on the bed. It's almost floating now. Down. I just clean your face. And you hear yourself talking foolishly and he's talking like a leader. And then he says, eh, must you say it? Abba, who is not growing too? You will always hate those who are doing what you are not doing. Always. You look at broke people. The day they bless your father, neighbors that used to laugh suddenly just get angry. They just gather themselves and say, ah, ah, hey, hey rain is falling, no. Mouths that cannot drink gari is now taking butter. You see, all kinds of insinuative statements. Whatever you are not doing, when you see someone doing it, it will judge you. You go around smokers and those who drink. Once they see you going to church, they just say, Ah, ah, Mother Mary, oh, pray for us. So they look like they are bold something is judging them you calm them down and talk to them and they will tell you they say I don't like my life but brothers and sisters let me tell you something those who will receive rewards in this journey are those who are living so ask yourself are you frustrating yourself for nothing or you are truly practicing the word because it's going to be terrible if after 10 years of standing one leg in one leg out you find out that those who are truly committed are now walking in the blessings and you are still standing. Hallelujah. Have you seen those who they are inviting for a dinner, for instance, and someone who just heard from somewhere, you dress too, you come and stand like them. You say, you, what do you like? Yeah, I like, uh, I like cold uh, uh, juice. You are not invited. You are there talking. You can talk like them. Once it's time for the invitation, they say, brother, so-so, this way. And you start becoming uncomfortable. 
and you're just standing there and say, ah, so how are you? Are you sure your name was there? How did you know you were there? Because you had been standing for long, but you were not part of it. Now, you didn't do other things, and by standing there, you were implicating yourself because you've already just said with someone, even say, we'll see together. When we get there, car, you're a very nice person. You talk smart. And then they say, last but not the least, sister, this, and you are just standing there. I say, what is all this? Huh? I've been standing here for long. It's not where you invited. Did you show signs of concern? That's how many people who name the name of... Do you know that's how many of our parents got into trouble? Ask them. They'll tell you we did evangelism. Uh-huh. We did evangelism. See, I, I was even president of, of my fellowship. That's not the issue. Did you practice the word of God that you were taught? They say, so, so great man. He was my friend. I was even praying with him. That's the deceit. You were praying, but did you believe it? Did you walk in the truth? Others were tightening. You were there pretending and telling lies. Now, when the cloud is full of rain for those people, what happens? Those who are not tightening, it doesn't come. And you are not telling people, bring bucket, oh, rain will come. They brought buckets and drums of water. You are waiting. Say, just hold on. It, it comes gradually. It has been, you have been waiting for 20 years. It won't come because you didn't do anything. I refuse to after committing myself to God and then at the end I will find out that I was only pretending and there is nothing to show forth for that. Two more scriptures and we'll pray quickly. Hebrews 4 verse 1. I will show you from this scripture. Tonight's teaching is an admonition. Let us therefore fear lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it too for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them he said but the word that was preached did not profit them why not being mixed with faith in them that had it look up so they had it but what happened it did not produce results see listen let me tell you something that's why you can have a crowd of people like this and we are praying and releasing blessings and you see some people lifting their hands but they don't even believe they are just wondering will it really happen how are we even sure this man of god is genuinely anointed you are there arguing somebody is opening up his spirit next week the person comes with a testimony i say why is it that there are some specific people i will find out this thing next sunday i'll come early and go and stand and see what media people are doing that's the cynical spirits that people have as a result of not seeing results in their lives. The Bible says they had the word. The word of faith, the word of healing, the word of restoration, the word of prosperity, the word of godliness, the word of success, the word of increase. They had it. They jumped like everybody. They shook hands with everybody. They danced with everybody, but they did not practice it. Can I tell you something? One of the things I have found out in scripture is that beyond a man of God, beyond an anointing that you sit under, you are principally responsible for working out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Work it out. When the word is released, you receive it. There are some of you that have been here with terminal diseases. It's been for a while. And you're just laughing and saying, well, well, this and that. For some of you, probably, part of the reason why you are not even receiving is you don't even believe. See, let me advise you. Don't come here if you don't believe I'm a man of God. You are wasting your time. Did you know that it's possible for people to do that? You just come and sit down and watch and say, ah, ah. And this happens especially for elderly people. When they come and see us stand here, they say, ah, these are young people. And, and, and you watch them sitting in their predicament. Look, let me tell you something. When it comes to the things of the spirit, drop your age, your title, your reputation, your educational status, whatever. And with meekness, you receive. That's the problem with a lot of people. Some of you have been calling some of your parents who have serious sicknesses to come. They say, ah, it's just youth. Hallelujah. Remember 
are going going to one house to go and pray for them they've heard about me they've listened to the messages and when i went there i saw the shock on the man's face apparently he thought he was his age mate coming when i came in he couldn't believe it ah. so he sat down and then for him to talk he was just merry-go-rounding he was wondering because some of his children are older than me you know he was talking hey how have i degraded myself now and i sat down there and with all humility i was beating the man i said who is suffering i was sitting peacefully at home you didn't let my phone rest now i have come this guy was suffering something he didn't want to say it It was a medical condition it was me and him he could not speak these are things i have had for years it's amazing how some people come to look and they just look and they say this and that a man is suffering from a particular he just sits down and you just who are you deceiving every time william branham wanted to minister to people he would look at them and say do you take me do you receive me as a prophet of god people would say yes instantly the vistas of their life will be opened up to him and he'll begin to speak to them one day a particular man of god called me he saw in a dream that i was ministering to him and he called he had been struggling with certain things to real challenges in his life and when he called he said well God showed me this thing eh? and I wanted us to rob minds together I told him keep your pride I'm not going to pick a call and rob mine you need you need deliverance and this is what God has sent for you to be done if you are ready come don't sit down there and say we're not robbing minds many of you will never admit see it, this is not bragging this is not bragging this could probably be the reason why some of you are not receiving any blessings. You see the protocol people start and say, Abba, Sonny, Abba, you are looking at me, okay, Sonny, we entered car together with you. You don't know the difference. My parents suffered for years. I was still anointed and liberating many families. For years, it grieved my spirit. Did you know that in all my years of ministry, I've only ministered in my state. Aside from crusades we organized, I've only ministered once in my own state. There are few places in this country I've not gone to, but in my own state, only once. You see that? This can be reasons why people don't receive. From the day, see, this is not human worship. By the grace of God, we respect. It's childishness. If an elderly person, someone older than you can give birth to you, is respecting your grace and you are now bragging, you are a child. There is not demonic possession. The, the remedy is just to grow up. But let me tell you something. You must open up your heart and receive. Praise the Lord. Are you receiving something? This could be probably part of the reason why some of you are not blessed. Every time you are receiving the word, you are just looking and saying, oh yeah, yeah, again. And you are remaining where you are. The anointing reacts to honor. brother. When God has put a man over your life, he's not your friend. He's not your colleague. It is in an attempt to express this point that certain men of God raise themselves. But the Bible says, do not exalt yourself more highly than you ought to be. There are people I will never joke with. I can be smiling with them. But the moment I want to beckon in the capacity of their anointing and call, I bring myself to my proper position. This is what some of you have been missing. Sometimes we give spiritual instructions here to help you read a particular book, pray throughout this week, go and you just laugh. See, your adherence to instructions. It says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from out of thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, they are life to those who find and help to their flesh. This is the reason why some of you are not receiving results. You're not participating in the things that can build you because you don't believe. But tonight,
tonight I pray that God will give us the heart to be doers of the word. Not just hear us deceiving ourselves. Because in the end you are the one who will suffer it alone. I believe the word of God. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you. I believe this word. We're going to pray in the next five minutes. Listen, and I don't know how you're going to cry unto God, but you're going to tell him, Lord, I'm making up my mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear the prayer point first. I'm making up my mind to be a doer of the word. You're going to honestly repent and say, Lord, I've not been tightened. I'm not faithful. See, when, when you are honest before God and you say, Lord, you are not a you are not an unjust God. Truly, I've not been obedient to your principles. You don't pray. You don't speak the word. We talk about speaking the word. Many of you just feel this is for children. Look at what your life is. Look at what your life is. Anything comes and goes. Hallelujah. But tonight we're going to pray. We're going to say, Lord, I'm not ready to tell lies again. I, I leave this aspect of the word, but I'm not serious in this aspect. Some of us is in the aspect of character. You can pray, you can fast, but character, you've never sat down to work on it. It's not an issue. Hallelujah. Some of us is love. Some of us is the spirit of excellence. We keep saying these things. You're not going to hear anything new. These are the principles that have made great people. But let me tell you something. Listen. There must be a resolve in your heart. God supplies the grace but you are the one who will make the resolve. The Bible says the prodigal son came to himself. No preacher preached to him. The prodigal son did what? Came to himself. Some of us may need to come to ourselves today and attack some things out of your life. Pornography, immorality. Hallelujah. False. Every kind of thing that is not consistent with Christ. You're going to make up your mind and say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word. This is what your principle says. And no matter what it will cost me, I lay down pride. I lay... Listen, see, look up. It's not difficult. Just resolve that you are going to be a genuine Christian. Is that too much for you? Is it too much for you to say, I'm going to mean business with God? Every principle that I'm taught with childlike faith, I'm going to walk. See, listen. I remember one time I was teaching someone how to drive. This guy was learning. Before I finish saying something, you say, I know, I know. I was okay, drive it, and I'll turn. And you just do blunders. I know, I know. If you find yourself in that attitude, you are on your way to do. There are some of us, that's what has caused you into trouble. I know, I know everything. I know prayer. I know, I know this. I know that. Shut up and sit down and learn. When I see people say things about me and I see certain people, great leaders in the body of Christ that I respect and I admire, and I see the dimensions they are operating in, I feel like a child and a toddler. 
and I maintain that posture of humility, accepting that there are so many things I need to learn and know, and I humble myself and take it. There are many of us, the last time you made progress in your life was years ago, because everything you know. You are sinking, they are saying, give me your hand, you say, I know. Are you joking? I can swim. You are dying. Bring your hand for help. I know. That's how many people are. That's how many of our parents are. God has raised some of you as saviors, but every time you want to speak to them, I know they are dying. I know. This is not an issue of medication. They've spent millions on the treatment. Get to a place where you will be free. I know. Don't worry, we have things under control. Run away from that demonic attitude. We're going to pray. Rise up on your feet. I hope someone received something tonight. This message is preparing us for the miracle service. In the next five minutes, listen, in the next five minutes, I like us to, if you want to lie down, you want to cry instrumentalist, I want you to really play. We are going to cry unto God in the next five minutes and say, Lord, I've not been practicing the word in this aspect and this aspect. There's no demon stopping my progress. I'm the one. I must admit it and you're going to pray lift your voice please don't look at anybody inside and outside lift your voice and pray lord cry unto him say lord i know many of the principles that would have brought me prosperity that would have brought me grace that would have brought me increase i've not made up my mind to pay the price and live by these principles lift your voice and pray don't deceive yourself again the bible says be ye to us be ye to us there are issues in your life You've been afraid of confronting. What you don't confront, you don't conquer. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I've not been praying for weeks. I've not been praying for months. I look like I'm a prayer warrior, but I've been deceiving myself. I've not given up wrong associations. I want to, but I've not given them up. Lift your voice and pray. I will not deceive myself. I vow to be a practitioner of kingdom principle. No matter what it will cost you. No matter what it will cost you. Ragata baga sataya, mambra teka reko sapa, rabaka preske perie da balaba, rapa brosko preske pati alaba. We are praying inside and outside just five minutes. Hallelujah. Listen, you know what rebellion is? Rebellion is the willful, perpetual and continuous state of working in non-compliance with the principles of God. Although you know, let me tell you something, if you don't do something about it, one day your life will be written Ichabod. The glory will rise gradually, but you will arise like Samson. The strength of many men have disappeared because they lack the stature to stay and continue in the spirit. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. We're rounding up. Make sure you are praying. Help me. Help me. Help me. I want to practice every truth that I know. That's the only evidence that you believe it. Challenge yourself tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Make a commitment tonight. 
Say, I will practice every truth I know. Whatever truth I hear, I believe it. I receive it. I walk in the truth. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel condemned. You may be convicted, but don't feel condemned. God is always a faithful God. And he's willing to help you. One more minute, we're rounding up. Rakata kosoto pakata lepros ke pariketa pranto pres ke lebo shataya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one quick prayer point. You're going to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace to live and walk in the truth of God's word, no matter how hard it is that I walk in it until it becomes a habit until it becomes a habit whether it's tithing whether it's speaking the word whether it's your study of god's word studying books that will develop you you know these principles get the tapes get the teachings share them again practice them lift your voice and cry for grace lord release grace upon us grace unwavering committer to walk by your principles no matter what happens you are faithful you are not a man that you should lie not the son of man that you should repent we can take you by your word you are trustworthy you are reliable we need not trust any other thing hallelujah look up look up see many of you need to go back home and talk to some of your loved ones all those all those renewal covenants and those devilish things you go and do that they bring whatever prophet to your house exactly. you know that those things are wrong you must not walk in rebellion it's time for you to demonstrate the sincerity of your commitment the things you used to do you can't do it again and say you are the same don't just say I'm the righteousness of God. No. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to me. Even if Satan accesses a life, access was given to him. You will be ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. This message, as simple as it is this night, I pray that it will ring in your spirit. I pray that you will not just be emotional about it. Take action. Some of you will need to call some friends and tell them you've been nice, but I'm really sorry. We cannot continue again. We are not going the same place. What if they say I'm bad? That's the problem. You can't find yourself everywhere doing everything and say you are going somewhere. No, no. Great people don't behave like that. You've got to be different. It may cost you your reputation. It may cost you misunderstanding. You focus. With time when your light shines, everyone will see it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's any sister here that you are around any guy who is sleeping around and doing every, whether he's a pastor, pope, bishop, lead him this night. Send him a text message and tell him, Pastor, I respect the grace of God upon your life, but I'm really sorry. I'm ready to be serious with God. Or brother or whatever, make up your mind to live by the word of God. Make up your mind. This is in preparation for the mighty things God is going to be doing on Friday. You must be ready to do it, to be a doer. Many of us, God stopped giving us instructions a long time ago because if he tells you, you don't even do it. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands, Father. As a family, we pray. We want to be authentic Christians. We want to be genuine. And Lord, we are asking you to help us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that genuine honest committer for God, his ways for obedience practicing principles that cut across every sphere of our lives our spiritual lives, our finances 
the anointing, excellence, whatever principle, help us remove a heart of stone, oh God, and give us a heart of flesh tonight. Let the spirits of men stop struggling with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And whoever is under the sound of my voice, who has become a prey to Satan, as a result of negligence, I set you free tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I silence the voice of the accuser over your life. I declare and I say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood speaks mercy which is higher than judgment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God will destroy any appetite for disobedience to his word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I separate you from godless associations. I pray for grace that as you go back home, what needs to be destroyed will be destroyed. What needs to be deleted will be deleted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. You're here inside and outside. You've not made a decision for Jesus. You've never given your heart to the Lord. This is the beginning. The Bible says, Come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. We are a family of faith. It's always our joy to welcome those who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. This is where it all starts from. Or those who have given their hearts to the Lord, but for some reasons you found yourself derailing. We are welcoming you home. Inside and outside right now, please leave your seat and run out here. As the Lord speaks to you, don't sit back. Be sincere. We've spoken about sincerity. You're about giving your heart to Jesus or you're making a fresh commitment. Don't sit back there. God bless you. God bless you. Inside and outside. Sisters, I see you. Keep coming. God bless you. Everyone, brother, sister, God bless you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. It takes boldness. Don't sit back there. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, even if you came with your friend, leave the person and come. It's an opportunity for you to have a fresh start. A fresh start. A fresh start. A few more seconds and we'll wait for you. A few more seconds and we'll wait for you. A fresh start with destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for making this bold decision. Listen. The Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I'd like you to lift your right hands to heaven, all of you in front here, and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. You shed your blood for me. In the name of Jesus, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm born again from today transformed person my name is in the book of life I receive eternal life into my spirit I denounce sin and Satan I walk in righteousness and true holiness in the name of Jesus Father I pray in the name of Jesus that you preserve these ones let Satan not have a say over their lives again we launch them into lives of victory and name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. Look at me. You just follow the ushers and they'll give you the relevant directions. Please appreciate them, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, inside and outside, we have a prayer and a blessing for you. If this is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia, please leave your seat and jump out quickly quickly we want to pray for you quickly inside and outside thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming god bless you yes come come inside and outside thank you for coming koinonia celebrate them come on this is the doing of the lord for those of you who invited them may god bless you may god lift you and cause his face to shine upon you thank you thank you for coming hallelujah Praise God. This is Koinonia. Thank you for coming tonight. Were you blessed? Hallelujah. Want to pray for you. You will never be the same again. I assure you. You will live with the presence of God. You will become a transformed person by the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to bless you and release a prophetic word over your life. And I assure you, you will see results in your life. Saints of God, stretch your hands towards them and bless them. 
prophesy over their lives. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, whatever limitation they came here with leaves them forever. We thank you. They will begin to see transformation in their lives. Whatever sickness you came here with, I command that it goes. Whatever oppression, it goes. In the name of Jesus, may your life begin to experience an undeniable transformation. May everyone around you see the outworkings of the Spirit in your life. May they know you came for Koinonia and that you met the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray that the Lord will grant you whatever your heart's desires are. In Jesus' name, thank you so much for coming. We'd love to see you again and again. Please follow the ushers, the map, the details, and then you come back. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please, let's listen to the following announcements and then we'll be out. God bless you. Hallelujah. Next week is our miracle service. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, sow a seed of inviting others. You know people who really need to be healed. You know families that are suffering and are oppressed. Please and please, let this be an opportunity. Come early if you invite people, especially for those who are coming outside of Zaria. Bring them on time so that at least even if it is outside, they can get a seat. Hallelujah. Time is 5.30. Our miracle services are not 6. Please take note. 5.30 on the dot we are starting. So you can leave your, um, your destination on time. Hallelujah. Please be a part of our bus project. Free bus transportation is available at the close of the meeting. All those going to Congo, please converge at the projector stand outside. Donuts and Zobo are available for sale by the welfare department. Hallelujah. You can patronize them and then Jordan Bookstore is there with books. Please, you can pick some books for your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to pray. Please make sure for the miracle service, you come with your prayer requests. Write your prayer requests. Receive that of your family members. Media, those who are sending online, please, they should send before Friday so that if it's possible to print it, we'll have it here and we'll pray. Hallelujah. It's going to be a powerful time. I'd like you to come expectant. Hallelujah. All leaders, don't forget we're fasting on Thursday, preparing for the miracle service. Hallelujah. Please rise up as we round up. Lift your hands and let me just pray for you. Father, this week I pray that you will do mighty things in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace for uncommon obedience. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Grace to be a genuine practitioner of God's word. At all costs, receive it in the name of Jesus. Grace to conquer anything that has become a mountain and a challenge over your life. I speak it over your life. You are distinguished. Go and prosper. Go and multiply. Go and increase. I call you the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. I bless you. You are separated from death and accident and the activities of wicked and unreasonable people. None of you will be a victim of, of assassins or wicked people. I put the seal of the blood upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call your family members blessed every closed door i swing it wide open in the name of jesus christ for those of you still writing exams i pray that you will experience the hand of god those of you traveling your journey is blessed everyone in your vehicle is blessed for your sake fear not for you will not die you have no covenant with death i rebuke sickness from your body in the name of the lord jesus christ after the grace i like you to hug 10 people and tell them you have the grace to live by the word Hallelujah. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord for tonight. In the name of Jesus. We're studying the book of Ephesians. Turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. This is Bible study tonight. The book of Ephesians. Can we pray for two minutes? Just prophesy to yourself, say in the name of Jesus, I'm above. Whatever the word of God says, I am, I am. Prophesy to yourself, we're praying. In the name of Jesus, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. 
the hand of God is upon my life the grace of God is at work in me the hedge of covering is around me I shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly it by day nor the noisome pestilence a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side none shall harm me with my eyes shall I watch and see the reward of the wicked thou shall comfort me on every side in the name of Jesus prophesy I'm separated from the peril of wickedness I am blessed blessed of the Lord the hand of God is upon me his anointing is speaking speaking about the angels are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to me because i am an heir of salvation i'm seated with christ i am the glory of god i have no covenant with death say it pray i have no covenant with death not by the sword not by wicked men not by evil people every tongue that rises up against me falls for my sake in the name of jesus the blessing of the lord is upon me i live long i am confident the lord is my shepherd i shall not be in want goodness and mercies follow me all the days of my life i move from glory to glory ever increasing faith ever increasing grace ever increasing glory doors of opportunity are opened up to me i hide the word of god in my spirit I hide the word of God in my spirit. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm full of the anointing. I have an unction from the Holy One. And it teaches me all things. I know all things by the Spirit. My mind is blessed. No divination. No witchcraft. No sorcery. No enchantment. Every handwriting has been blotted out. I shall not suffer the sins of the fathers. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person. I've been called out to show forth the praises of him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm of the commonwealth of Israel. I belong to the glorious family. Hallelujah. I walk in prosperity, ever increasing prosperity. I walk in health. I refuse sickness. I refuse sickness I and the children that the Lord has given me we are for signs we are for wonders we are for signs surely they shall gather but because they are gathering of God of the Lord they shall scatter my family is preserved prophesy my family is preserved from the wicked I'm the redeemed of the Lord, I say so. I'm the blessed of the Lord, I say so. I'm the anointed of the Lord, I say so. I have the wisdom of God. I know what to do at every time, in every situation. I'm guided by the Spirit. I am blessed. I walk not in the counsel of the wicked. I do not stand in the way of sinners. I do not sit in the seat of scoffers. But my delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law I meditate day and night. I'm like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. I yield my fruits in season. My leaf does not wither. Whatsoever I do prospers. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yes. Holy goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I walk in the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Your words have prophetic implications and that every time you begin to speak you send signals in the spirit you know how a plane is coming and there is a communication between the tower and the plane when you prophesy you send signals in the spirit
hallelujah we are training you to be a dangerous people dangerous when jesus walked upon the earth he stepped into a place he didn't talk to the demons he didn't talk to the devils but when they saw him they began to make negotiations when you become so full of the word and so full of the holy ghost you become dangerous at that point you can dislodge principalities and powers over your family and over your life say i'm not weak i am strong strong in the lord yes daniel 11 32 it says and they that know their god they shall be strong they shall do exploits hallelujah you are not wasting your time here every time you invest in the word every time you invest in the presence of god i assure you you are not wasting your time god is building you as you pray in the holy ghost as you worship because satan is mapping out his arsenals and on the other side god is raising an army and kingdoms will rise against kingdom but light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it never has there been a time where light had to negotiate with darkness and the bible says the entrance of his word give that light so you become full of that light everywhere you step in you dislodge darkness hallelujah the book of ephesians you see i don't like the devil look at me let me tell you something i don't like the devil i have no business with him he has no business with me we are not friends hallelujah we're going to be studying the book of ephesians it's a bible study so please bring out something to write there are some of you who if you did not hear this girl's testimony you will not bring out writing materials now you are bringing out your bible say i better write now don't be afraid of entering car or entering all of these things if the satan if, if the devil drives my car I will still enter because he will take me safely i assure you he will take me safely you will not even know what came upon him but he will drive me safely see i've met armed robbers on the road i have seen demons it's just that god has said i won't die you don't know what i've gone through so don't you just say i share you are enjoying where do you do? <laughs> when you become full of the word you will be victorious see if you refuse to be full of the word you will think we are acting this thing on stage that's the problem those who don't invest in the word think he's just acting they say it's not true jared this person is just talking when I tell you there is a realm that you can rise above sickness, there is a realm that you can rise above failure, there is a realm that you can rise above the oppressions of Satan, there is such a realm. And we are contending to enter that rest, but there is that rest. And the Bible says, let us therefore labor. This is where we are laboring, in the word, in prayer, so that we we'll enter that rest. There is that rest hallelujah now the book of Ephesians um, it was written by Apostle Paul I just want to give you a little background the book of Ephesians theologically speaking it's it's been agreed among theologians and Bible scholars that the book of Ephesians contains one of the highest church truth do you understand it contains one of the the highest explanation it gives the most precise description of the believers work as far as um, our work in the kingdom is concerned Paul used the first six chapters to explain 
uh, different areas of the Christian life. Hallelujah. Was written to the church in Ephesus, helping them to understand the realities of the life. I hope you understand that Paul uh, was not necessarily taught his revelations. I, I follow me now. He got it expressly by the Spirit. And so he got his revelation and so he wrote this thing to the church but it was not just supposed to stop with the efficient church it was supposed to be spread around all the churches that he had planted because it contained certain truth that paul had received from the spirit and we're going to be considering these things hallelujah broadly is divided into three the first three chapters of ephesians talk about our position in christ the realities what we call new creation realities it helps us to understand who we are on account of what Christ has done for us. So we are going to be examining that. The first three chapters, the book of Ephesians, attempts to discuss what we have become. It contrasts who we were outside of Christ and outside of the commonwealth of Israel. And then what the redemption of Christ has brought to us as a believer. Hallelujah so at the end of studying the first three chapters of ephesians you are supposed to know who you are the whole concept of the plan of redemption what really happened we fell from grace what kind of grace so you get to understand the concept of grace and of redemption and the fact that for all have sinned the concept of righteousness and the walk the 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 the, the resting place hallelujah so it teaches you and reveals to you your position that you are seated with christ in heavenly places that's the summary of the first subdivision of the book of ephesians it teaches you how to walk in the reality of your position seated in christ hallelujah and then chapter four and five gets to discuss what we call the walk of the believer it talks about conduct and character how you walk in the kingdom w-a-l-k it teaches you how to walk how you can live as a kingdom citizen begins to guide you on the principles that's where it begins to talk of spirit-filled living talking about living in the world living in character living conducting yourself such that you can be seen as a christian hallelujah and then chapter six teaches you how to stand hallelujah that's where a lot of ministries get the concept of warfare it teaches you how to stand in your position in christ against the wiles of the devil so it teaches you your position of rest in christ and then it teaches you how to walk and then it teaches you how to stand hallelujah tells you how to stand with all the armor that you have been equipped with the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation your shoe guarded about it tells you all of those things holding forth the shield of faith wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts so we are going to be examining this at the end of this study you are supposed to come into that experiential position where you know who you are in christ you are aware you are convinced of the blessings and the benefits of redemption and then you know how to walk and to live as a christian now the entire book is very every time you are studying the book of ephesians it's important to study all the six chapters because when you study only one part of it you will have a, a misguided knowledge hallelujah if the bible tells us we have been seated in christ why does it teach us to stand against the wiles of the enemy again are you following me now if the bible tells us that we are seated in christ then why should it tell us again to still guard i mean you are seated with christ satan cannot come there the bible says he was judged out of heaven and there was no place for him again remember the book of revelations he said there was war in heaven lucifer that old serpent he was judged casted to the earth and there was no more place for him that's what jesus was speaking in luke when he said i beheld satan falling as lightning why as lightning because the angels move in that speed he said he maketh his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire and so he was casted from the heavens because remember in the book of job 
the bible says when the sons of god gathered satan was in their midst i hope you realize that the bible was not written in chronological order that means in the order with which they happen if the bible was written in chronological order job will be before exodus are you listening to me so the bible was not arranged in chronological order the dispensation of job was called the dispensation of conscience because we do not see the manifestations of the law there hallelujah the progression of the dealings of god with man is that from the garden of eden right from the garden of eden when man fell the word of god reveals to us that god had known i hope you realize that god immediately man fell it was revealed in the garden there that the redemption of man will be the ultimate uh, solution through the shed blood of jesus christ because the bible says that god killed a lamb and used it to cover what adam and eve that was a type of the substitutionary work of jesus it was a prophetic type of the atonement shown in the garden there are you listening to me and now adam adam was the first man god created after the judgment listen to me not the first man that was created in eternities adam is not the first man who was created from forever no adam was the first man created after the fall of lucifer genesis chapter 1 verse 1 we're doing bible studies the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth then verse 2 says now the earth was dark and void and formless comes from two hebrew words tohu bohu all of them all these greek words they mean confusion and chaos darkness every time the bible talks about darkness there are three words one ignorance two confusion three the manifestation of the workings of the flesh so every time you study the bible and it talks about darkness it's talking about confusion it's talking about ignorance every time the bible talks of light it doesn't just talk of the presence of god it talks of illumination and god said let there be light that light was not sunlight because a few verses later the bible says god made many lights so what light did he say let there be hallelujah so let's establish the fact that Abba, adam was not the first man on the earth he was the first man created in the image and the likeness of god why because i needed to understand that between genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 were many many years are you listening to me it didn't just happen the way the bible summarized it 28 that's where the bible gives us a description of the one we know as satan today the one we call lucifer i hope you know lucifer was once an archangel lucifer was the archangel in charge of worship just like michael being the archangel in charge of war every time the bible talks of the manifestation of war and standing in for the saints the archangel that is sent is michael and every time there is an activity that requires service delivering a message is who gabriel that's why when daniel was praying daniel said he began to pray and for three weeks he was praying and gabriel was bringing him a message but the prince that was surrounding the territory of persia because the bible tells us that the it gives us the the the, the arrangement the strategic arrangement of what we want to call the satanic kingdom hallelujah it says we do not our, our, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood but against what principalities and powers and rulers and then he talks of some that do not function in the earth realm he calls them spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are the ones that are in charge of territories and now this spiritual wickedness was in charge of persia because daniel and the other people were caught in the babylonian captivity at that time and so he, he began to seek the face of the lord hallelujah and when gabriel was bringing the reply the prince of persia stopped gabriel but gabriel is an archangel should he not fight no the angels do not break their ranks and so he kept praying until michael the archangel came hallelujah remember in the book of jude when the bible says some of you don't read your bible when there was struggle over the body of moses the bible says how that who michael was struggling he was supposed to take the body of moses and satan say it belongs to me 
and now michael could not fight there he said the lord because this was satan are you listening to me now the lord rebuke you are you still here so satan was cast and when he was cast i want you to understand according to scripture the bible says one third of the angels fell with him hallelujah imagine the kind of influence satan was the valued cherub the bible calls him there's no time sorry i would have gone in depth hallelujah he calls him the valued cherub that covereth his embodiment he was made of the objects of worship and he had access to the heavens and the earth i hope you know by that time the then heaven here was there was no blockage between the heavens and the earth there was free access and satan could walk upon the holy mount of god until iniquity was found in him what was the iniquity he said i will exalt myself and i will arise above the stars of god he wanted the position of god because he felt he could legislate and satan alongside all the other demons one of them being the demon spirits called leviathan how many of you have read about leviathan some of you don't read your bible only i i receive this it just makes you grounded and then the bible talks about the manifestation of satan again it talks of apollyon these were all of the of the angels that fell together with lucifer hallelujah and so when they fell you see flood in scripture is symbolic of judgment are you listening to me that was the judge it was the judgment of lucifer he's casting down from the heavens that led to the chaos of genesis 1 verse 2 do you understand now now the earth was dark void and then the bible when it was time to recreate the earth then elohim the father the son and the holy spirit the singular is eloha one of the trinity three of them or any once is more than one is elohim in the hebrew and elohim said light be in other words i withdrew you that light listen is the life giving dimension of god because when jesus manifested in the book of john the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he said he was with god in the beginning and through him was all things made and without him was nothing made that was made he said in him was what light and that light was the life of man so when he was saying let there be light he was releasing that factor that dimension of him that causes things to exist he said let there be light and he said there was light and he saw that it was good then he began to recreate the earth and then he made man from the dust of the earth i hope you know when he made man the word man there is adam adam is not just the name of adam are you listening to me in the hebrew adam is man dust the woman was inside the man when he pronounced the blessing that's why whether you're a woman or man you can walk in the reality of what the word of god says the separation happened in genesis chapter 2 when he caused man to sleep and he took out of that man the rib and created the woman hallelujah are you following me now so when you say women are weaker vessels based on what because when the blessing was being spoken to the man adam the woman was in the man are you listening to me now and so adam became the the first recreated man in the image and the likeness of god what is the image of god the image of god is not physical the likeness of god means two hands god has two hands not three the bible tells us there is a right hand meaning there is a left one are you listening to me you would have just said hand hallelujah you use scripture to compare scripture we call it systematic theology how you can use one scripture to explain and give light to another scripture and then you are you are unable to take just one aspect of scripture and create a doctrine out of it until you can find the same operation in both the old and the new testament because the bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses is a matter established i follow me now so one is the number of unity two is the number of witness are you listening to me when the bible says hear O israel the lord your god is one now hebrew is a very big word the only word that is close to hebrew is, that we can liken in nigeria is yoruba you can have many words do you understand for instance the word en in hebrew n it means what is at for 
so it depends on the context you need the holy ghost to be able to interpret some of these scriptures that's why those who interpreted the early translations of the bible misuse certain words like authority and power there are four words in scripture that are used to connote power one is called kratos one is called iskos one is called exousia the other one is called dunamis most people just know dunamis and exousia exousia is the outworking of the word every time you take in the word in your spirit what happens is there is a build up of what we call kratos the in walking of the word when you are full of the word what you release is the outworking exousia the power of attorney you are so full of the word that now you can represent him and so when you take out time and pray in tongues the build up of that dimension in you is called iskos is the power the inner workings of the spirit when he said building up yourself on your most holy faith that's the build up so when you lay hands on the sick what you release is dunamis the power the ability of the spirit able to reproduce itself that's why you can lay hands on 100 people it's like fire you can use one candlestick to light many are you listening to me now where are we we've left the book of Ephesians are you learning something we want us to know the word of God and to appreciate the workings of the word. So God created man. Let me tell you something about Satan. Satan is a spirit. One of the fallen angels now fallen. Are you listening to me? He is fallen. See after me, Satan is falling. There are certain attributes of Satan I would want you to know even as we start. Number one, Satan is not omnipotent. In fact, let me put it this way. There are three attributes that make God, God all by himself. Number one, he's omnipotent. The word omni means all. Potent means ability. All powerful. Omnipotent. The, number two, he's omniscient. Omniscient means all knowing all knowing he knows all things number three he's omnipresent the psalmist said where can we hide from your presence omnipresent means he's everywhere whoever can possess these three attributes at any given time is called god whoever at any given time can be omnipotent omnipresent omniscient god this is what satan cannot be everywhere at the same time are you listening to me for instance he's not here Are you listening to me so don't just sit in that fear and say hey, hey, is satan no satan is not everywhere he cannot be everywhere at the same time because when he went to god in the book of job god asked him he said ah from where are you coming he said what from going to and fro but you never hear god saying going to and fro it's only his eyes that go through and fro he's called alpha omega the word and is an error in the translation it's not and omega alpha omega that means there is nothing called future in his presence everything lays bare it's not called alpha and omega alpha is the first of the hebrew letters omega is the is the last so it says he's the first and the last alpha omega hallelujah so satan manifests with different spirits different manifestations of spirits hallelujah and there are many of them death is one of them death is not a phenomenon death is a spirit are you listening to me the bible says that there were four riders upon the horse in the book of revelation and he said one of them held a pair of balances and the name of that spirit is death so it's a spirit hell is a spirit for instance hell is not just a location i've told you hell is in the earth hell is right at the center of the earth hell lies in the shape of a man and enlarges itself every time the psalm is seeing this by revelation he said hell enlarge itself he said i will go down to the pit where their worm dieth not hallelujah i hope you know that jonah went to hell jonah didn't just stay in the belly of the fish jonah went to hell jonah began to give descriptions of the gates and those in chains and in hell So hell is a spirit the bible says that at the judgment when the sea will give up all those that died in it are you listening to me and then he said hell 
will give up all those that died in he said hell death the last spirit that will be destroyed is death he said hell death and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire no man is in the lake of fire right now the lake of fire is part of god's kingdom he designed the lake of fire for the punishment of satan so all those that have died and gone to hell have not started the punishment it is when satan is officially taken to hell that their punishment will start reading because every time we we call it in theology the doctrine of interpenetration how two people can become one that's the mystery of marriage wherefore shall a man leave his what father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall become what one that's how the bride and the spirit the church and the holy ghost became one he that is joined to christ is what one spirit now he that is joined to satan is also one spirit are you listening to me he that is joined to satan is one spirit so how does satan carry out all his activities he tries to mimic the operation of the trinity because the administrative structure of heaven is such that the father is always the initiator the word is the one who speaks things into be the holy spirit is the pentecostal arm of the trinity he's the one who makes things happen that's why in genesis chapter 1 verse 2 he was the first of the deity to be revealed and the spirit of god hovered around the face of the waters now satan also tries to mimic the operational organogram of heaven by trying to create what we know as 666 666 is not just something people will receive on their head and their hand 666 six is the number of a man are you listening to me one is the number of unity two is the number of witness three is the number of establishing a thing and then it's also the number of trinity four is the operation of the holy spirit five is the number of grace and mercy six is the number of a man seven is the number of perfection eight is the number of new beginnings are you following me now so 666 is satan trying to mimic the operation of god the first six stands for satan who wants to be the father himself the second six stands for the antichrist the antichrist is both a system and a person the antichrist government started at the birth of cain and cain departed from the presence of god and built a city naming it after his son enoch the same spirit of the antichrist followed nimrod and nimrod said let's build a city whose tower will reach the heaven the same spirit was upon nebuchadnezzar and he built babylon the same spirit was upon jezebel and ahas the same spirit was upon herod the same spirit was upon herod in the book of acts and the same spirit is what is explained in the book of revelation the mystery babylon so there is the antichrist as a system but there is the antichrist as a person and that person is the one who tries to mimic jesus when you read the book of revelation it tells us that the antichrist will not have anything to do with women because jesus did not marry the antichrist will die and he will come back to life power will be given to him the dragon will give him power and then the last six stands for the false prophets who stand trying to mimic the holy spirit why are there many because the holy spirit is the only holy spirit we have we don't have many we have him but because satan cannot be omnipresent so he uses many people your rap artists your your the, the touts around town they are all the manifestation of that spirit are you getting something so satan is not a mystery satan is a person he cannot be everywhere at the same time are you listening to me and hear what I, I know why i'm talking to you about satan because we're about to examine something briefly seated with christ the book of ephesians we're, we're taking the first chapters when when you when i read the chapters now you will understand based on the foundations that i've laid now look at me please quickly let me explain something what did man lose i need to explain to you what man lost first and foremost please can i have someone a guy and then can i have someone help me with a veil please we are going to the Garden of Eden right now. I'm not going to be a lady. I'm not one of the stupid people in society who change themselves from men to women. Hallelujah. Now, this is righteousness. This is not a woman. Righteousness. Hallelujah. Now, look, look at me. Listen genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and elohim said 
let us make man in our own image are you listening to me and now the bible says that christ is the express image of god that means let us make man in christ are you listening to me that means let us look at the word and reproduce man out of the word the first adam was created the second adam was born unto us a child is given are you listening to me that's why he he was when jesus came to the earth listen to me he was the only son of the father when he resurrected after acts chapter 2 he became the firstborn of the begotten he's no longer the only son of the father what are you are you listening to me you are a son whether you're a lady the word son is not male figure the word son is weos and technon i've taught you this weos and technon technon means a child baby one who is void of knowledge but you are still son so the bible says as many as received him he gave them power to become sons are you listening to me so now this is adam listen adam was made in the image and the likeness of christ and authority was given to adam listen the condition to be able to walk with god is that you must have righteousness equal to that of jesus not less are you listening to me so god created man in the very righteousness of christ so god could come in the cool of the day and function with man but you know before man was created satan had already been casted so he was roaming around that's why he told him he said subdue the word subdue means there's an enemy roaming around are you listening to me now watch this satan comes in genesis chapter 3 and meets eve why eve because eve was the woman taken out of man the authority was given to man are you listening to me and satan came to eve in an attempt to tempt eve because adam loved eve i hope you realize that when eve was eating of the tree adam was not somewhere tilling the ground he was there with her so ladies don't let anybody tell you it's you that caused trouble why didn't he stop her adam was there she ate it and gave him what made him to eat it love 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 is still what is throwing people today love no, now follow this are you listening to me so satan listen satan's ultimate quest was not eve he needed to use eve to get adam so now the second adam comes as christ and the eve is now the church are you listening to me so satan still wants to take that authority but now he's attacking the eve of the second adam which is the church the body of christ that's why the bible calls us the bride of christ we are the bride of that second adam now he has righteousness satan comes and tells eve did god really say that in the day you eat of this tree you will die let me tell you satan's strategy every time satan comes to you the first thing he will do is to attack what god told you god announced over jesus this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased he goes to the wilderness after 40 days satan said if you are really the son of god didn't god just say it 40 days ago god said it satan said if it is true prove it just like satan looks at you and says if you are truly beautiful prove it and he said man shall not live by bread alone what is bread a uh, bread is what nourishes the body so man shall not live by sensory perceptions alone but by every rhema every word that comes from the mouth of the lord are you following me now we've not even started the teaching of Ephesians. this is just the background hallelujah now adam was created having this say righteousness now right everybody righteousness is the ability to stand in the father's presence righteousness is the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of inferiority and without a sense of condemnation the ability to stand in the father's presence when you were growing up and you stole meat when they got to know about it you you almost wanted to die when your father was coming back home because you've lost righteousness that ability to stand when your result is good you run home and you you can't wait for your father to come but when when it's not the way you hoped for it to be you'll be wishing that you travel that's righteousness are you listening to me so adam had this anyone who did not have this righteousness cannot relate with god watch this so when man fell 
I hope you realize that man did not fall by eating the fruit. Eating the fruit was the proof that he had fallen. Because death is first spiritual before physical. I hope you know Adam did not die physically yet. He lived many hundreds of years ago. Death was the natural consequence of the deterioration of the sin nature. We'll talk about that. I just want you to understand this concept first. So when man fell, watch what happened. The first thing that happened is when they ate, the Bible says their eyes were what? Open. Look up. There were two trees in the Garden of Eden. One was called what? One, get your Sunday school book. One was called what? Some of you didn't even go to Sunday school. You were buying ice cream with or, 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 your offering and playing ball with oranges where your friends were receiving the word of the Lord. One is called the tree of life. The other is called what? Now, the tree of life, the job of the tree of life is to make you live forever in whatever state you are in. Are you listening to me whatever state you are in you have to remain in the in that state if you eat of the tree of life so when god created man in his image eating of the tree of life will keep him in that state so by reproduction he will give birth to many children after his kind who are after the kind of god are you listening to me now the tree of the knowledge of good and evil exposes you to two things it opens your eyes truly to begin to be aware why good and evil adam did not know that that there was judgment upon satan he didn't know certain evils that happened before he came are you listening to me so satan did not really lie when he said you shall be like god you will know some things that have happened that there is more than you are seeing so when he came to him when he ate and eve ate what happened their eyes they had eaten listen everything you receive through satan will give you these two things good but with it will come a measure of evil knowledge of good and evil and the whole journey from genesis to revelation is everybody choosing whether he'll eat between the knowledge of of the tree of life or of good and evil because in the book of revelations we see that there was a tree of life in the throne of god the other three had disappeared because everyone that made it must have chosen the tree of life so there is no more tree of the knowledge of good and evil are you following me please hmm. their eyes were open what happened they suddenly realized they were naked what covered them in the first place shekinah the cupboard of god the literal glory of god the way it covered the face of moses it covered the entire structure of them so they did not even see their nakedness but they were naked are you following me now now the glory lifted and this is what they lost man lost three things when he fell number one he lost the holy ghost the breath of life the one who will guide and instruct him number two he lost righteousness look at this this was lost so man the soul of man according to the tripartite nature of man i hope you know you are a spirit you live in a body and you have what a soul when we talk of soul what are we talking about it's just your spirit in the consciousness of your will emotions and intellect now watch this please man falls all right and suddenly he discovered look at the manifestations of the soul now his spirit died what is death separation from the spirit of god the spirit of god left man instantly he died he said in the day you eat of that tree you shall what that means you shall be separated from my spirit at that point we see solical manifestations suddenly he was afraid suddenly he was timid and they went to hide and the bible says in genesis chapter 3 and he heard the voice of god walking in the cool of the day the literal hebrew rendition is and god and the talking spirit was walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where are thou and adam said i had thy voice and i hid because i was what naked he said who told you that means everything you know today somebody told you whether it's right or wrong somebody told you and adam said what the woman he didn't say my wife again you see where family controversy started from he said the woman you gave me is woman i was minding my business you came to come and produce something out of my read the woman and now he said woman why have you done this then listen certain curses began to come one of it was the cause of tilling the ground he said in your sweat 
shall you eat and to the woman he said the travail of childbirth are you listening to me and the ground was cursed and to the serpent i hope you know the serpent was one day we'll talk about that i'm not ready to say something now you are not okay no problem when we are talking about the war <laughs> the the standing i will tell you why is satan interested in snakes have you wondered why what is it about serpents and people the traditional people in your village people who have dreams and see snakes why not monkey why not why not goat we will explain that because you will find out that before the snake fell the serpent was not the serpent was not crawling the way it used to crawl hallelujah we are going to study the word we we'll examine a lot of controversial things for instance the bible tells us enoch the father of seth the father of adam the son of god or the son of seth the son of adam where did he leave cain and abel read your bible they were not among the genealogy ah then the bible says adam knew his wife and he gave birth to Cain. he didn't tell us he knew his wife again meaning he slept with his wife but we see abel manifesting the second time adam will know his wife they gave birth to seth and he said on that day men began again to call upon the name of the lord so were they twins sila the second question is where did cain get his wife from because cain was banished are you listening to me I will make you love your bible and then we'll examine again what really happened that suddenly look at me the bible says by their fruit we shall what how come cain and abel the bible never tells us that adam is the father of all the living but it tells us eve is the mother of all the living bible what are you saying don't confuse us here because now we see adam and we see, i mean we see cain and we see abel suddenly we see the manifestation of the workings of the spirit in the life of abel but we see the manifestation of satan in the life of abel and god told him hey to the point that cain will now kill his brother and god told him sin lieth at your door who taught him all these things i thought they were the first children of of adam and eve who taught them the concept of sin and the concept of falling who is the father of cain who is the father of abel who is really their father because this was the revelation paul was trying to give the people in romans chapter 7 he said within me although I came out from one womb the womb of the word of god i see the manifestation of two persons in me he said with my spirit i serve god however i turn and i see another law walking in my members so that the things that i want to do i do not find myself doing and the things that i don't want to do i find myself doing he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death then verse 8 chapter 8 verse 1 starts he said there is therefore now no condemnation to a certain kind of people are you seeing the relevance don't think we are just bamboozing through history no 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 we are trying to check something because the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and built a city that's where the antichrist government started from it started from cain how did this happen didn't adam teach his children well could it be that cain had another father Sila. so man lost righteousness hallelujah when man lost, lost righteousness he ran away from god listen from that time i hope you realize that the law the prophets and all of these things were only interims do you know the law that the law was not part of god's original agenda for man you know the manifestation of the prophets of old the prophets of old paid both prophetic and apostolic roles because one of the proof of an apostle is that you must have an encounter with the lord jesus directly paul said am i not an apostle have i not seen jesus are ye not the seal of my apostleship are you listening to me now no man had at any time seen the word because until then the word had never found expression physically 
he was only the word are you listening to me now it was only when the holy spirit turned the word to become a seed and planted the bible says he appeared before men and they saw him he was full of grace and truth so until then no man ever knew how the word looked like his original name was not jesus i hope you know that jesus was the name he took when he boy when he had a body because when the prophet prophesied he said ye shall call him emmanuel emmanuel is a hebrew word that means god in our midst god with us jesus was never called emmanuel once is it was he called emmanuel in your bible they gave him jesus there are mexicans that bear jesus today jesus is simply the hebrew is jehoshua that's where you get joshua it means god our salvation that's where they get yeshua because they pronounce y for j yeshua that's why you see some versions they say hallelujah instead of yeah you see j hallelujah or hallelujah some people say hallelujah are, are you are you learning something please we're examining the book of Ephesians and there are certain foundations that you must have so man left the presence of God when he left the presence of God what happened that began what we know today as experiment the Holy Spirit was supposed to lead man into perfection but now man had fallen are you listening to me so he had to now start using his mind and then wickedness began to grow and then later we are going to be studying how that the Bible says that the sons of God slept with the daughters of men and they gave birth to certain kinds of things. They corrupted the race. Men with six fingers and six toes, unusually big. That's where Goliath came from. So what happened? When we study, I'm going to show you from the Bible the origin of HIV AIDS. And you will know that HIV AIDS is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. It's something that came from the interaction of the realm of the spirit and this realm. That's why when it comes into you, it attempts to change your DNA. It paralyzes your immune system. The solution is not just medicine. The solution is the power of God. This is what is, is taught in the film you know to be X-Men. That there are certain people by reason of genetic mutation, acquired certain supernatural ability. And then they say a war will happen one day on the earth. That's the prediction of the films you watch. And they are not lying. That is the word between the sons of light and the corrupt race. Some of the films you watch, some of the pictures and the demons that they come from, do you know they are real demons? One day I saw the advert of a movie and I saw a, you know, all these kind of funny films. I've seen that demon in the realm of the spirit and they use the mask of the demon in a real film. I said, what the heck? The producers of these films are real men of the spirit. Don't you think they are just intellectuals? They say he has PhD, whatever. Uh -uh. These men go by divination and sorcery and they have a covenant with Satan and they come up with the pictorial representation of these demons. For instance, the way Michael Jackson dances is a, a, there is a, there are evil spirits that dance that exact way. It is when they inhabited him that he started doing that. It's not a lie. This is true. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 1. We're out of time. The time has even gone. Don't go and sit. Maybe you want to go and sit. Okay, go and sit. I'll use somebody else. Paul, an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god to the saints who are at ephesus and to the faithful in christ please take on your bible we are reading we're going to read um this is part one the book of ephesians part one grace be unto you and peace from god our father and from the lord jesus christ verse three blessed be god and father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us with what spiritual blessings where spiritual blessings in heavenly places he said according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world so you have been chosen that means your life listen the bible says those he predestinated those he called he justified he glorified you are not just an accident you have been planned are you listening to me something happened on the way but but by the wisdom of the spirit there was a plan of redemption to bridge the gap now god wants us to continue what would have happened if man did not fall if man did not fall what will we be doing i hope you know if man did not fall there will no there will not be apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors 
they came because of the fall their ministry will end one day when will it end when the saints come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ so those who say there are no apostles again there are no prophets there's no need arguing ask yourself has the church come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ if not then the ministry of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors is still valid hallelujah the apostles break the ground they build the people they equip the people the evangelists by the anointing of the holy spirit bring people from the fold of darkness the pastor the word pastor is shepherd and that is not even a teaching title that is an administrative title the word pastor is the word father so they father the people they help them they build them a pastor is not just a preacher are you listening to me and then there are the prophets they reveal the oracles they reveal the blueprint and they give direction so the apostles receive the signals from the prophets what is god saying and they are the ones that have the faith and the audacity to go through it agabus revealed to paul he said whoever has this girdle is going to jerusalem and he gave paul direction paul said god has already shown me but he said i will go they are the ones who plow the ground that's why he makes us stubborn before he sends us because Kai, the people that were sent to are not, they are very stubborn people. Prophets are seen as they can be quiet and calm, but apostles are not quiet people. Doesn't mean you should just be stubborn and say, Oh, this is the secret of being an apostle. I will not obey my mother again. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Having predestinated us into the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ Himself according to the good pleasure why does the bible use adoption adoption means that we belong to another kingdom before when you adopt a child what do you do you take that child and engraft that child to become your own hallelujah to the praise verse 6 of the glory of his grace through which he had made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption listen now in whom we have redemption how through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace now look at this the bible says there were hebrews and we're talking about seated with christ we'll discuss it in brief maybe 10 minutes about the whole concept of redemption what is redemption the word redeem means to salvage to save by paying a ransom hallelujah that you salvage someone by paying a ransom i wrote a book some years ago not guilty never released it but it was a, an attempt to explain to man his present position in light of what christ has done now there was a contention you, when you read the book of romans that's where it contrasts between the law and grace down into galatians and colossians and then ephesians it seems that paul had a controversy because the jews and the gentiles had an issue watch this the jews were god's covenant nation the gentiles every time i use the word gentile it means whoever was not a jew real jew from nation of israel so we we are called what gentiles are you listening to me those who are separated from the commonwealth of israel now the jews were a people who entered a covenant i hope you know that they entered a covenant with god sealed by what circumcision are you listening to me it was a covenant with god because they needed to be a separate people with whom the messiah would show up now the gentile nation they were hidden nations they did not love god they served other gods when jesus christ came listen remember that when he was sending the 12 and the 70 he told them do not go any other place go to the lost ship of israel are you listening to me now because he wanted the jews because the jews had paid so much price for jesus christ to come so the bible says a worker is worthy of his wages and he will be the first partaker are you listening to me so the jews were to be the first partaker or uh, the partakers of salvation but they rejected christ and then the blessing came to the gentiles that's why till today those in israel if you've gone to israel for pilgrimage those who are leading the people and driving the cars they are not even born again they don't believe in the messiah they just know that they have a historical monument that is making money for them hallelujah and so here was the problem the jews were saying we are better than every other nation why because we are a covenant people we are circumcised and we are a covenant people now the gentiles were far this is what the jews were saying this is why they rejected the gospel of paul paul was saying for all have sinned what is all have seen jews you have broken all the commandments they've given you gentiles you did not even have you were you fell from adam 
that's why i said by one man sin entered the whole world are you listening to me now the jews were contending they said no for anyone to receive of the blessings of salvation he must become a jew by circumcision then from a jew he will now become a partaker of god's blessings and paul was saying no he said it's not necessary that the only circumcision that was required was the circumcision of the heart hmm, help us god so we have redemption through his blood our redemption listen to me the word redeem means to bring somebody back to an original state by paying the price are you listening to me according to god's eternal justice the bible says in ezekiel chapter 18 it says the soul that sinned it shall die the soul that sinned it shall die so according to the verdict of god's justice when man fell he was judged is that correct in the days of noah the bible makes us to understand that men be began to do things that displeased god and he judged the earth with a flood and then there were eight people noah his wife the three sons and their wives why because eight is the prophetic number for new beginning so god was beginning a new race now god knew that he would not need to keep killing people and wiping one generation after another then they had a plan and that plan was jesus christ are you listening to me now so the prophets came to guide the people to guide the people in the way of the lord until the manifestation of jesus christ when jesus showed up he showed up as the one john said the one who sent me told me that the one on whom i see the holy spirit descend he is the lamb of god and when he saw him he said behold the lamb of god so everything that happened in the old testament was a foreshadow a foreshadow are you listening to me so jesus comes and walks upon the earth jesus came for two reasons and none of them is to take you to heaven listen to me hallelujah the first reason jesus came was the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile us to the father do you know why we are going to heaven one day <laughs> look at me do you know why we are going to heaven one day because satan must be judged and the prophecies that have been written they are called the written judgment they must be executed upon the earth and the bible says let he, that him that let it will let that means it is the church who, who are the light of the world that are withholding the manifestation of the antichrist the antichrist cannot manifest when the church is here because light shines in the darkness so don't let anybody fool you with all of, yes the government of anti of the antichrist is already being formed are you listening to me but the antichrist cannot show up until the church leaves the holy spirit will need to give way for that manifestation so who are those who will be the missionaries the jews when they see the exit of the church truly they will know that they have been misled because they are waiting for the manifestation of the son he came in a manger and they said according to their prophecies he's supposed to come with great chariots and horses and so they are waiting for the manifestation the coming of jesus the <laughs> what we well Will I call it second coming? The second phase of the exit. For those of you who have been taught that there is nothing called rapture, change your mind. There is something called rapture. There is no word rapture in the Bible. Just like there's no word trinity in the Bible. Every time you see a word that is used that you cannot find in the Bible, you search for scriptures to confirm it. Are you listening to me? Like trinity. Jesus comes out of the water. The father is speaking. The Holy Ghost comes in bodily form. You see the manifestation of trinity. But that's not enough because two scriptures must confirm it. Then we see Stephen. Stephen is full of the Holy Ghost. Looks up to heaven and sees the father sitting and the son standing at his right hand. Now we know that there is something called trinity. So rapture. The Bible tells us in the book of Thessalonians and, and many other scriptures. How that there will be a time when there will be a glorious exit of the body why so that the vials according to revelation will be poured upon the earth are you listening to me we are the ones who are withholding wickedness do you know i've not even touched on ephesians we're just doing general bible study well wherever we can stop we'll soon stop and then pray but are you learning something the word of god is supposed to make you grounded the end of this this is part one in part one we are supposed to learn who we are in Christ on account of what Christ has done say after me because of what Christ has done I am alive today Oof, dear Lord okay let's see how far we can go because Paul began to pray Paul was praying a prayer to the Ephesian church that they will see what he saw he prayed in verse in verse 17 he says I pray that 
I bow my knees for this cause. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that He may grant unto you what the spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in the knowledge of Him. Your heart being flooded with light that you may know certain things. He says that you may know the hope of His calling and what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of His power and all of that which He wrought in Christ. And He said, Now Christ is seated in the heavens okay let's let's wherever oh lord wherever we can stop let's start from where should we start from the holy communion let's just take it from there i have to at least cover some grounds the holy communion what is the holy communion what is the revelation of the holy communion now look up please by this time it was evident that man had fallen and the only remedy is christ because the, without the shedding of blood there is what no remission of sin and any soul that sin it it shall die is that correct now man sinned i hope you know that the concept of sin listen sin is first a nature before an act are you listening to me so when you see someone fornicating or doing something the sin is not really the fornication the fornication is the effect of that nature in the person the strength of that nature in him because the bible says for instance it says that second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 it says, he who knew no sin became sin did jesus sleep with any woman did he steal any man's property but the bible says he became sin so what is the bible saying he who knew no sin became the embodiment of sin so that we might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus so when man fell he took on that fallen nature that nature of satan man lost his dominion man lost the holy spirit man lost righteousness and all through from genesis chapter 4 down to the manifestation of the sun it was just a transition a, a, a temporary transition awaiting the coming of christ so at the holy communion now jesus had told them he was going to die watch this please he sits with 12 people because 12 is the number of government is that correct and what does a government do they represent the people are you listening to me so jesus christ was entering a covenant with the whole world through 12 people using them as a prophetic point of contact so that he could now die for them are you listening to me because there had to be a way for substitution to happen and for substitution to happen christ would have to take on the nature of man in death so that we would now take up his nature in life are you understanding me and that's what the holy communion jesus said except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood you do not have my life are you listening to me now he had said he's the bread of life and he's the cup the living waters so he took of the bread and broke it and gave the 12 people the moment they ate it there was a legal grounds in the spirit where christ can now take the nature of man that's why after the communion he went straight to gethsemane what was he doing in gethsemane he was crying no he was not crying that's where what we call the exchange began to happen the substitutionary sacrifice of christ are you listening to me him becoming sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in christ this is what paul is trying to explain if you do not understand what christ has done you will not know who you are you see why he says we are seated with christ sitting symbolizes rest is that correct so everything as far as your redemption is concerned you did not do anything it was christ that did everything so if you try to do what christ has already done it will be futile you just need to embrace what christ has done and walk in the reality of it are you listening to me now when jesus was at gethsemane listen you know why jesus cried and said father if it be thy will please take this cup off me what cup was it the cup of death on the cross no 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 the cup of separation for the first time the trinity were going to be separated the holy spirit who came upon jesus christ like any man at baptism would have to leave him so that he can die are you listening to me the holy spirit came back after three days and resurrected him back again from the dead meaning he left him when the bible says he gave up the ghost he gave up his spirit not the holy ghost the holy spirit left him that was the only condition for him to pay the price that he was paying so that cup was the cup of separation 
because listen it was in gethsemane jesus began to become the adam i hope you know that on the cross he didn't start dying there he finished his death on the cross the death started in gethsemane because adam first died spiritually is that correct and then he died physically so if jesus were to qualify and meet the condition of being the second adam he will have to die spiritually first and what is spiritual death separation from the holy ghost so the holy ghost left him in gethsemane and then they held him watch this from that time he did not become jesus the christ there was no more christ in him christ comes from the word christos the anointed one and his anointing he was no longer the christ he was jesus sin me and you the embodiment of every sinner are you listening to me now he began to pay the price that me and you would have paid so let's have jesus here there's something very lovely the catholics do sam you are jesus they remember during lent period they get a jesus and move him around now watch this man fell every king has a crown on his head is that correct your crown is the symbol of your royalty so man when we fell we lost that symbol of royalty so a crown of thorn was put upon his head in substitution for the restoration of our royalty are you listening to me that's why a crown of thorn was put everything that happened to jesus from gethsemane was the substitution and so they took him he was naked why because the first adam lost the glory and he was naked i hope you know that all the covering you see around jesus was just for social reasons he was naked now when they took him this is what isaiah saw he said who has believed our report to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed he saw jesus battered the same jesus that he said unto us a child is born unto us a son is given now isaiah in his prophecy he was seeing in a vision and he saw jesus disfigured he said he was bruised beyond recognition he said by whose stripes we are healed watch this so jesus christ was taken and the roman whip this is how they flog people sam put your hand here watch this so that there's no hope of touching it it's not the way they flog people now and when it was a way of torturing criminals are you listening to me the roman whip had about 10 compartments and at the tip of it they used bottles and nails it was a way to torture criminals so that they'll confess when they flog you with that cane you say there's no hope of lying let me just tell the truth there's 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 no hope of lying it's, it's not wisdom now i want you to understand i'm teaching you the substance this is what paul saw by revelation because he was not there when this was happening i follow me now and they flogged him every time they flogged you the cane will wrap around you and hook to your flesh so when they pull it out part of your flesh will fall that's why they, that's how they beat jesus now isaiah was seeing this and he said this was in exchange in exchange to restore you to health because the soul that sins it shall die are you listening to me now when christ was suffering you were in him are you listening to me why because we took up the communion together so now whatever he's going through in the realm of the spirit we were good this is what you would have gone through for your own sins but christ said let me show you love he said you just step by i will do everything for you whatever the result is i will get it so when somebody tells you ladies when he say if not you enter well tell him just love me like jesus that's all i want <laughs> and you will see whether i can truly love like jesus do you know what jesus went through we were going to die and jesus said no you can't go through this he told the whole world he said stand come into me by covenant and let me suffer for you so that everything i'm doing you see that so satan did not know when jesus gave himself satan was out to destroy the seed of the woman because there was prophecy that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent so when jesus gave himself satan was happy and he said crucify him he did not know that there was a covenant paying the price for the whole world are you getting it now so he was happy when they were beating jesus and the life of the flesh is in the blood when man was created from the beginning there was no blood when jesus christ resurrected there was no blood and it is that bloodless life that he gave you follow me listen 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 i want to shock you i know many of you say i ah, don't deceive us okay hallelujah now jesus was beaten when he was beaten they spat on him they did everything 
the bible says in galatians chapter 3 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law who are the us gentiles being made what how did he redeem us by becoming the cause according to jewish culture every man who carries a tree you know it was a tree that fell man from the beginning so christ had to now carry that tree are you listening to me it was from the foot of the tree that man solidified his fall now he lifted it to golgotha golgotha is called the place of the skull that was where adam it was where adam died the skull the place of golgotha golgotha means the place of the skull the exact same place he was going there to be the second adam are you listening to me now when he took off the cross he became the curse so that in him i was carrying my cross too are you listening to me and then while he was going to that cross he encountered a man called simon simeon of cyrene you know who simeon of cyrene is he was a black man this is why i tell you africa and the black race participated in the substitutionary work of christ that's why there is a glory that africa will reveal before christ comes yes it's prophetic when christ was suffering the bible says that who will partake of the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows so that simon was a black man it's not today they started belittling the black race and so they said carry the cross now the african continent in one man participated and helped jesus christ helped him and took that cross and he took him to the cross watch this now jesus is in the cross there are two thieves whatever they stole they are on one side and another side and jesus is here are you listening to me now he stretched his hands listen the death on the cross was the worst form of death they will call everybody in the city to come and look at you jesus was hung naked a 33 year old man the only clothing on him was the blood watch this and he stood on that cross and when they nailed him his hands and his feet blood was already flowing listen the moment the blood touched the earth it gave room for the atonement of our sins are you listening to me because man was made from the earth when that blood touched the earth when he hung upon that cross it was a substitution it was him conquering the tree and the power of the nature of satan are you listening to me and he hung there on that cross and then they pierced his side and blood and water came out meaning he died of a ruptured heart jesus hung there and while he looked at the he looked at everybody the father had turned against him because the father turns against every sinner now jesus had become a sinner and when he looked to heaven he didn't see the father looking at him again and he said eloi eloi lamak tabak sanai he said how will you turn your face now jesus had become you and me are you listening to me the holy spirit was not there to help him no angel was there to help him he was alone on that cross and then he gave up the ghost guess what happened when he gave up the ghost he had died there was joy in hell why because the seed of the woman who was prophesied that would bruise the head of the serpent and restore man had now died but they did not know that except a corn falls to the ground and dies this was a prophetic mystery it was the secret of reproduction so jesus sowed himself in upon the earth when they were burying him it was that seed that seed of abraham that will be sown upon the earth and suddenly he appeared in hell they just saw jesus christ appearing in hell and satan said what a mean why did he go to hell because when sinners die they go to hell jesus died a sinner he couldn't have gone to heaven he went to the hell that we were all supposed to go to that means there is no need for anybody today to go to hell again because he has tasted death once for every man are you getting blessed we'll soon round up and now when he went to hell the bible says that all of the cohorts of hell were on him remember that all satan wanted was to be acknowledged as one above god now christ came as the express image and satan told him if you would just bow down to me i will give you the whole world jesus never said it's a lie you don't have the whole world because as at that time satan was the, he held the keys that he collected from adam are you listening to me 
he held the keys and so jesus went that was the key that held your destiny your life your breakthrough your healing for the entire race you couldn't have done it by yourself and so jesus said don't worry i'll go and do it for you now when he stepped all the demons were upon him because satan said you must bow to me by force he said everyone in hell bows to me and now jesus shows up and says satan you will bow to me you get the word that was happening here that's why the bible says he made a public show of them what drama was going on in hell follow me and when he the legal claims of justice i've explained to you the concept of justice if somebody steals in your house and you take the person to court what happened if they tell the person give him 30 lashes as they are lashing the person the the pain of that person is consoling you are you listening to me is that correct that's how because man offended the father it was the punishment of man that would appease him and jesus became that one so for every time they were oppressed there was a measure of justice that would appease the father's heart that's why nobody protected jesus until the legal claims of justice was full and he said all right the father's heart is appeased and jesus got up and made a public show the bible says you know what he made make a public show have you watched wrestling where the other party didn't even punch the person once that's what happened and then he went to satan watch this when he went to satan he said give me the keys which keys of joshua selman's life and destiny in the book of revelations he said i am he that was dead but now i'm alive and i hold the keys you see that when he said that watch this in him every one of us stretched our hands by covenant and said let me have my own too and that of my father and my mother and my brother this is what paul saw by revelation now he collected the keys follow me now psalm 24 when he when he had the keys no don't open we're out of time when he got the keys he was about to go out and suddenly there was a clarion call lift up your heads and be ye lifted O ye ancient doors hold hold on those gates were living they were not dead those were the gates of hell he said i will build my church and the gates of hell those gates were the gates of hell because no man listen until that time ever was permitted to go condemned as a sinner and then come back again into the world to come and redeem men but here was this man he came and there was an announcement from heaven lift your head in other words gates open up somebody is about to leave hell and come back again and the gates asked a question they said who is this king of glory look at the words king of the glory that man left and then he said who is this king of glory and the voice said the lord why did he give him the attributes of a warrior he just conquered satan he said the lord strong and mighty and the gates asked again lift up your he said lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted all ye ancient they had swallowed people nimrod ahas different people followed that gate and he said there is a king that entered and wants to ride back said, who is this king he said the lord of hosts is his name suddenly the gates opened and jesus stepped in and the holy ghost hmm. because all this happened in the realm of the spirit on the third day suddenly the father said angels you can go and michael came and rolled the stone and sat and said let me see the person who will come and roll it back and the holy ghost came listen that's the work of the holy ghost now listen the physical body of jesus had been decaying there are you listening but when the holy ghost came because listen jesus the spirit body of jesus was now alive and now they needed a quickening if that same spirit that did whatever he did to that body now lives in you he said the exact same way he turned a mummy and removed every biological decomposition that same spirit and he came upon that body suddenly jesus was comfortable to enter his body when he entered his body he got up and he stepped out when he stepped out he stepped out in glory and the, the, the disciples were hiding and he stepped in watch this he the moment he resurrected he started manifesting the character of spirit beings 
walked through a wall and he said all hail in other words job done when when mary saw him she wanted to touch him she said rabboni he said no don't touch me you will corrupt this thing i have not yet ascended to my father why because he would according to hebrews he would need to be the high priest remember that when he talks about atoning the word atone means to cover now in the jewish culture that you need to atone for the sins of the people using a lamb that was one year old and it was spotless now jesus became the lamb the problem is or the the advantage is that he doesn't have age so the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement now jesus became the lamb and poured the blood from that ageless lamb and he became the high priest again and carried the blood took it to the heavenly tabernacle poured it once upon the mercy seat and said all right priest and everybody your era ends we don't need you again suddenly he was able to step down and he said guys all hail he says all authority listen philippians chapter 2 happened before he came back that was where the coronation service happened immediately it was not when jesus left in the book of acts no he had become lord and then he came and said all hail all authority in heaven and on earth has now been given unto me he said you now go in that authority are you are you are you following me now so how does this apply to you now watch this the moment sam comes out for altar call watch this please and you confess the lordship of jesus over your life and you believe in his substitutionary work not just that he died for you but that you died in him say i died in him i was wounded in him i paid the price in him the moment you make that decision what happens this rope remember our good old rope again the very righteousness of jesus even if you were a drunkard right there with alcohol in your stomach listen you look exactly like jesus before the father and now jesus takes you as the mediator and says father behold and the father said i cannot see a sinner all i'm seeing is somebody as exact as you we are now partakers of his divine nature this is your present day reality in christ now demons listen when you catch this revelation and you activate it the realm of the spirit will receive the signal that you know who you are are you listening to me and the seal of the blood is upon you and the proof that the deal was done is he sends the holy spirit to come into you whereby you cry abba father now you can call god my father you're not just a stranger somewhere are you listening to me now the holy ghost comes what happens when he comes you are blood washed you are redeemed if jesus christ comes are you going to go to heaven yes you will why the proof that you go to heaven is that you have the holy spirit any man that does not have the holy spirit in him cannot go to heaven are you listening to me now what you call eternal life look at me eternal life is not life after death eternal life is the presence of the holy spirit in a man he is the life of god the one who brings eternal life to you and then you are sealed with the blood so you have been an arm robber you have been a cheat you have been whatever you are this is why a lot of people cannot understand the message of righteousness because it looks like it's unfair how can you say i've been a, i've killed people i've done all kinds of things the moment i come to christ with a broken heart suddenly i become the righteousness of god in christ and he looks at you listen to what god says he says not guilty let me shock you do you know what not guilty means not guilty means you did not commit any sin come on god come on god when we say guilty but pardoned it means you fell are you listening to me and somebody has bailed you but now god says you are not guilty not guilty means whoever was on the cross was the person who committed that sin and now we see christ on the cross and he looks at you and says you are free lord i'm free i killed people i drank alcohol i did all kinds of things he says whatever you are saying i cannot see you again there is an eclipse of the blood between me and you and anything seen through the blood is holy that's why the holy spirit the spirit of holiness comes upon you so say i'm the righteousness of god now look at this now this guy is born again watch this sam is born again 
but he finds himself walking in a path that is ungodly assuming he finds himself fornicating again and this guy loves god he's born again he's praying in tongues and he finds himself what happened the bible says i write these things to you that ye sin not he said but if ye sin ye have an advocate with the father even jesus the righteous this is the hope of the believers listen to me that you are the righteousness of god and listen listen please i need you to get this when a believer falls or a believer commits acts of sin what happens has the person lost his salvation no no there are two conditions to lose salvation one is that you practice the sin of rebellion what is rebellion willful perpetual continual breaking of the laws of christ consciously if i'm here now and i'm preaching and i know i'm going to go and drink tomorrow i know it's wrong i plan it it's in my mind that's rebellion rebellion shifts you out of the covering of great the grace of god and outside of his grace what you see is judgment are you listening to me so god is not some perfect god who is waiting and the moment i look at this person and i'm angry and i just slap it hey hell no if that's the condition nobody will go to heaven not even me look at the way i shout at you all the time and then i'm talking of going to heaven this is the revelation of a guilt-free life now watch this a lot of believers have carried this and say ah so if whatever i do so long as my conscience is clear and i can open up my heart and be repentant before god it means that i'm free that means i can go and sleep around with every lady in the world and suddenly just go to god and say lord you won't have again please forgive me paul says shall we continue in sin that grace may abound but you see you're not going to stop when you preach and tell people stop sinning stop this if they could do it they will not do it in the first place there is an ability that you need to tap into are you listening to me it's called the redemptive grace of god so i've been bought with a price satan cannot look at me and remind me of my yesterday therefore if any man therefore if any sinner if any smoker if any malpractice practitioner be in christ what happens he is oh, it doesn't matter what happened in the past say my past is past say it my past is past so that somebody does not come and tell you when you were four years old sam your mother kept money at the back of this you carried it if you are in christ you are a new creation say i'm a new creation say i'm a new creation so why do you still feed on the word of god when you are a new creation you feed on the word of god because now you need to renew your mind receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls you will need to renew your mind and come into the experiential reality of what christ has done watch this that's why you can see people say i am in christ and i am a new creation but what you see in their life you still see curses you still see curses you see them suffering the things that they are saying i am free from because it's not just confession alone are you listening to me confession must also follow an activation walking in the truth and walking in the reality of the word this is why we are teaching you the word otherwise there will be no need we can just stop and say there's no need to come to church again you are in christ go and you will suffer and as if christ did not die for you so we begin to teach you the principles and you begin to receive this the bible says we are seated in christ say i'm i'm seated with christ i have been crucified with christ i have been crucified with christ rise up on your feet say i've been crucified with christ my past is past i'm a new creation in christ i love the lord the nature of sin is broken in my life guilt is broken in my life now look at me please let guilt end in your life right now there are many of you who have done things every time god wants to use you satan reminds you every time he reminds you of your few of your past remind him of his future hallelujah we have been called we have been redeemed i no longer belong to satan i'm not going to hell this is what it, there are many of you who are born again but you don't have what we call the assurance 
of salvation say I'm heaven bound because I'm in Christ I'm confident of my position far above principalities far above powers and the Bible says listen he said as he is right now so are we in his life as he is who is he a king so I'm a king the life that flows in him not when he walked upon the earth his present day reality I have the divine nature a life immune to sickness a life immune to failure that's why the Bible says though the righteous fall seven times there is a nature that cannot leave him there he will surely rise again lift up your voice and pray say I'm seated with Christ seated with Christ seated with Christ come on pray Christ died for me it's over with guilt I refuse to let the guilt of the past I am one with Christ I am one with Christ I am one with Christ hallelujah so listen when Satan goes to your past he's supposed to see Jesus there on the cross if Satan is still seeing you, it's because you don't have a revelation of what Christ has done. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, say, I am in Christ. Say, I am in Christ. Hallelujah. We have been raised up. Listen to me. Listen, listen. You have been raised up above the king in your village, above the shrines in your village where they took your name. Are you listening to me? above all of these things you are being raised up in your family there are things that can cause men everybody is tall in your family you are being raised up say i've been raised up say it again i've been raised up they say nobody can become a success in your place i've been raised up you are the only person who went to school i've been raised up you need to prophesy go ahead and prophesy in the realm of the spirit i've been raised up i've been raised up I may be from Kogi State, but I've been raised up. I may be from Kano. I've been raised up with Christ. Raised up above curses, above sickness, above limitation. Where Christ is today, that is my present position. I've been raised up. 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 Raised up. Above principalities. Above powers. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 We're rounding up. From today and for the rest of your life. Never allow anybody call you a failure. Are you listening to me? Stop calling yourself those names. You have been raised up. You have a new status, a new class. As he is today, he has raised you. This is what Ephesians tells us. We are seated. You may look like a non-entity, but you are not ordinary. Say, I'm not ordinary. Say, I'm not ordinary. Say, I'm a champion. I'm a world changer. Yes. Yes! Yes! Look at me! Look at me! So, when someone looks at Jimmy and says, Jimmy, you will be a failure. No, see, stop crying over what people tell you. There are many of you that are so word sensitive. They say you are stupid. No, I'm not. Because Jesus is not. Say you are foolish. No, I'm not. As he is, they look at you. You see a carryover on the board. You said, This is not my true status. No, no, no. They look at you and say, Yusef, eh? you this girl, will anybody marry you? Are you joking? Christ lives in me. See, package yourself today and begin to walk in this consciousness refuse it listen 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 
refuse it. Refuse it. Jesus refused to let the mindset of Nazareth follow him because he was a world changer. Many of you are allowing the mindset and the limitations of your family to follow you. You are a young man, but you are behaving as if you are 60 years. Every time they say you are, you are always, it's not for us. They can't bless me. When you see blessings in the world, you laugh and say, my village, me, that my accent, I'm even sounding, when I speak, you know I come from this village. What is our business with that? The Bible says you are being raised up. When demons knock your door, they can't see you. You are above. Listen, something happened. Oyedeko was sitting in his parlor and he was praying in tongues armed robbers entered and they were searching they didn't see him that's why demons demons should not be able to find you I tell you you are seated with Christ you are seated with Christ you are seated with Christ I'd like you to just imagine Jesus sitting and then he called you and said come 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 be seated with me Finally, you are going to rebuke everything. Listen. Come against sickness. Mention all the things you are above. Don't keep quiet. There are some things that are making you look like what we are preaching to you is a lie. Now is the time to confront them. You confront darkness with light. Prophesy. I'll be raised up. I can never be a failure in life. No. 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 Above sickness, above sickness, above HIV, above HIV, above migraine, above headaches. Say, I'm above, I'm above, I'm above. God, God, so take it. In. Announce it in the realm of the spirit. Satan, I'm above you. I'm above demons. I'm above failure. I'm above this system. I take a tab and I'm above. Hallelujah. I've been called into a victorious life. I'm above. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what you are going through. Say I'm above. Say I'm above. I'm above. Go second take a book of Shupai. I've been raised up. I've been called out. I am not a sinner. Don't call me a sinner. I am not a sinner. Saved by grace, a product of the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. The price of one soul is the blood of Jesus Christ. So, when you know that you are the body of the holy ghost the temple of the holy ghost when you know it will govern your conversation speak like a king talk like a king don't talk like ordinary men when they say there is a casting down don't speak like them you frustrate the revelation god is giving you we are not governed by the things we see we are not governed by the things we hear you are born of a faith life you speak like an ambassador whenever listen whenever life hear me whenever life tries to negate what the word of god says then you stand what do kings do they legislate on behalf of heaven you don't keep quiet you speak i have an authority that's why i tell demons go and they must go i tell you they must go that's why i'm confident you see listen you see why I told you, sweetheart, you see why I was saying, I wish I could stay with this girl for one minute. It's not because of what I have done. It's what Christ has done and he has brought me into the reality. I'm blessed. It's not my fault. It's what Christ has done. So when, some, when you look at Jimmy and Jimmy is singing well, it's what Christ has brought him. 
So when people insult you and say you are proud, say I'm not proud. I'm just telling the truth. I can't tell a lie. Don't ever let the devil tell you you will be a failure. Failure? What for? Somebody looks at you and says, Miss Ward, in three days you will die. Ah. You see, when you have the light of God's word, all these, these erroneous lies of Satan, look at this precious lady. That they said that the, the moment she reveals the secret of their Babalao, that she will die. Die for what? Are you listening to me? Don't think death. When you are traveling on the road, think royalty. Think royalty. Think of the angels. Think of a throne. Think of a king. Whenever I'm traveling, I'm happy for those who are traveling with me. Because I'm sure they are safe. A man entered a plane. And when he entered the plane, he was about to enter the plane and he turned and he saw Billy Graham. He was happy. He wasn't happy because he was seeing Billy Graham. He said, I know God will never allow Billy Graham to die. So I am confident that this flight is safe. Can somebody say that about you? Hallelujah. When you go back all through this week, I'd like you to keep prophesying. Say, I'm seated. So we are reading throughout this week. Ephesians chapter 1 to chapter 3. Please read it again and again. This is just part 1 and we have not even finished. Lift your hands. Lord, we thank you. For your word and for your grace hallelujah very quickly if this is your first time please keep standing we're rounding up don't sit down this is your first time please appreciate them as they run out this is your first time worshiping with us we love you you are royalty you're seated with christ please keep clapping give them a royal clap if you're a king that you know you are come on appreciate them appreciate them you're welcome sir thank you so much appreciate them they are still coming appreciate them they are still coming kings and queens hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for making our time to come may god bless you we thank you we are so happy that you came Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.